for this half day webinar on fire safety of pa passenger coaches. We are fortunate to have with us chairman and chief executive Sri V K Tripathi, who will be who has been keenly following this subject from the beginning with a keen urge to find a lasting solution to the problem of containment of coach fires. Uh, sir will be joining us at 10.30. That's, uh, and I welcome Sri Ravindra Gupta, DG Safety, who has also joined us this morning. He has an extensive experience in coach design and man maintenance issues for over 22 years. And as GM RCF, he was closely involved in the issue of coach safety. Hands on. I welcome Sri Dishi Sharma, AMME, who has envisioned this webinar. We are also fortunate to be benefited by the presence of Sri R.K. Mangala, AMPU, who has been firmly piloting the rolling stock production ecosystem at Railway Board. I welcome industry expert Sri Shailesh, who will also be joining us to give us an overview about the developments of detection and suppression technologies. At the onset, I would like to make an honest confession that the phenomenon of fire, its origin, spread mechanism and containment, plus lessons to be learned from our journey so far, is far too complex a subject to be covered in a three-hour session. So kindly forgive me if some or several of the important issues of coach and co coach and component designs, maintenance practices, supplier performance are left uncovered. While the incident of fire safety in passengers coupled with boiler explosion have been recorded very early in history of rail transportation, the regulatory mechanism for using fire retardant material is rather a recent development. Although aviation industries attempted basic flammability test procedures around 1960, detailed regulations were adopted only after the 1983 fire incident of a Canada flight. Early safety guidelines for passenger rail car retardancy material are also dated around 1983, although fire prevention measures on electric and diesel locomotive on rail systems were prescribed much earlier. The FRA, the Federal Rail Authority, published recommended rail vehicle material selection for fire safety around 1984. The National Fire Protection Association NFPA standards for rail transit systems were also published in 1983. The German, the French, the British standards were also developed around late 1980s to 1990s. In, in 2009, CEN approved the contents for the proposed EN45545 with details framed much later. However, the non-availability of norms did not prevent many operators like Sinkelsen to achieve fire safety by keeping control on the root causes. Results are spectacular that since, since, since its inception in 1964, there are no fire incidents for over 50 years on Sinkas. Until in 2015, there was a fire incident on account of a person setting himself ablaze on the train. On this background, this webinar will specifically focus on the key areas, including inspection issues, not only the first time our rights inspection, but more importantly, the inspection by maintenance teams during service, fire detection and suppression technologies, and some passing reference to standards over three sessions by Sri Sandeep Jain, Group General Manager, Northern Region Rights, Sri Yagnik, uh, Chief of Faculty, Mechanical, Nair, Sri Shailesh on NNS technologies, of NS, NNS technologies, an open house brainstorming session has been planned in the end to see if some firm action plans can be chalked out. I also invite participants for general comments and questions at the end of every participation, at the end of every presentation. I do appreciate that many of us have, have apprehensions on ethical dilemmas and issues. Even if these are, have a bearing to the ground, I request participants to keep out of these <laughs> scope of discussions today and this is any temptation to bring them in the limited time and scope of today's workshop does not permit us to delve deeply into this subject. With this, I request Sri D.C. Sharma to share his views in about five minutes. Sri D.C. Sharma, over to... Thank you, Ravi. 
and uh, good morning to all the participants i uh, thank irmi and especially mr yagnik from uh, nayar to have organized this seminar basically the purpose of this seminar is to place the topic of fire safety uh, at the topmost pedestal because as we all know safety is the top priority and no effort is too much to ensure that the fire incidents do not take place and further loss of rolling stock or the lives of human beings or any materials is prevented the today's seminar is Uh, sorry the the role of fire safety in passenger coaches is paramount and uh, as ravi said in today's seminar we will be able to cover some of the key areas the key areas which merit attention is the specifications their constant upgradation their suitability to the indian environment and here by environment i mean to say the quality of materials which are available in india to indian railways the testing facility is available the basic prescription of the specifications because the basic concept of fire worthiness is to understand that there is nothing which is fire proof even the metal melts at a temperature of 1000 degrees a lot of work has been done uh, earlier by rdso and later on by the production units in the last two decades the concept of fire worthiness the concept of fire proof coaches and all that has started to take shape in the last two decades only now with more and more ac coaches coming up with increase in the technicality of uh, coach materials and uh, electrical items the complications also are increasing one way to look at the fire safety is to improve the specifications but the immediate benefits will come only from discipline the discipline in maintenance the discipline in data integrity the discipline in recording of data and acquisition of data last few accidents can all be attributed not to poor specifications but to poor discipline the poor discipline of the railway system shows itself in way of bypassing the test procedures while maintenance or manufacture of the coaches ignorance of equipments and their details and lack of data acquisition so efforts are underway to improve the data acquisition systems to create systems where inspections and observations are recorded as a part of the coach history another big area where i am sure we will benefit from mr yagnik's and other people's competence is the uh, is the loopholes in the inspection procedures so this is one area which can give us immediate benefits and one more thing uh, i would like to add because before uh, leaving the field open to the technical experts is that the whatever we do we must be inspired by our own ecosystem and environment while it is good to look at the us standard it is always good to look at the german engineering it is always good to look at the european standards the uic standards and the australian standards and the congo standards but we must understand that india as a system is if not bigger at least at par with most of the railway entities in the entire world so we must learn from our own experience we must learn from our own industry and we must do whatever is the most appropriate 
for the Indian railways. So in the end, again, I would like to thank the participants for having chosen this topic for uh, highlighting uh, today's area. The fire safety is very close to uh, the agenda of everybody, including that of the CEO and CRB. And uh, I hope he'll be addressing the meeting soon. And my request to everybody will be that today's meeting will not be the first and last meeting, but it will be the flag bearer for all the discussions on fire worthiness of coaches and fire safety and all those things. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, may I request uh, AMPU to Mr. Shri Akemangla to speak a few words for five minutes and give us address. Shri Akemangla, sir. Yes. Good morning, everybody. Thank you, Ravi. Uh, CRB, sir, and DG Safety will be joining us soon. Shri DC Sharma, AMME, Shri SK Yagnik, COF Nair, uh, all the PCMEs from railways and PUs, all HOT senior officers from railway board, railways, IRMI, RDS, or Nair. Uh, today's uh, seminar on fire safety in coaches is certainly very relevant. And uh, AMME has told very clear, nicely that uh, we have got all the specs all the testing procedures in place, and we keep on upgrading them also. However, it is the discipline which is required. So it is time that we once again dedicate ourselves to fire safety. And the most important goal that we should try to achieve in fire safety in coaches should be no human loss in coach fire. That should be our aim, that uh, whatever systems we are having, ultimately there should not be any human loss. And uh, a number of instructions have already been given in last uh, few days, few months, and regularly they have been issued. And uh, a large number of actions have been taken on these instructions and some are in progress, like, uh, to find a suitable safety system for Vande Bharat and many other such issues are being worked upon. So, I can say that fire system on coaches, uh, I can, we can have three parts. Fire safety system, where our CDs, CQMs in PUs, CWEs in railways, and RDSO, they are vigilant about the materials that are coming, the quality of materials. So this is fire safety system. Then we have fire prevention system. The fire has to be prevented. Our CSOs, senior DSOs, and branch officers, uh, they are in forefront of this fire prevention through public awareness, through skill upgradation, uh, training of the staff, the escorting staff. So all, all, all this becomes, uh, all these are part of fire prevention system. And third one, fire management system. Once the fire is there, how we manage it as part of the disaster management. So the role of senior DMP, senior DMEs, CMPs, who are managing the fire uh, disaster, uh, the accident and disaster management uh, that comes into play. So personally, I feel that uh, we should have, like we have safety meeting seminars. We should have uh, special fire safety seminars in divisions and in headquarters, because fire safety coach is uh, one issue where external agencies are also involved, not only our ourselves and our production units and our operation and maintenance, but external agencies like commercial, RPF, NDRF, Specialized firefighting agencies are there. So coordination is very important for this. Uh, if we can have more seminars in our divisions, in our depots, in our headquarters with all these agencies, that will also be very useful. And I'll also say that we have so many manuals, accident manual, disaster manager manual. Here we should have one chapter on fire safety also. 
so that it gets uh, due importance. Lastly, I will say that like safety and quality where each officer is responsible, fire safety also requires that all of us become more, more uh, concerned about this issue. And in all our fields, in all our inspections, uh, we give due importance to fire safety in coaches. And finally, if we are able to achieve this goal of no human loss in coach fire, Hello? that should be our ultimate ultimate aim. I once again thank everybody, Mr. Yagnik, Nayar, Irmi, RDSO for organizing this seminar. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, can I request now uh, DG Naya and uh, Irene to kindly say a few words? Shri Amita Boja, sir. Good very good morning to Mr. DC Sharma, AM Mechanical Engineering, Mr. RK Mangala, AMPU, all the participants. I can see there are at present 147 is the number. Good. Because my benchmark for any such thing is it should be not less than 100. So we have crossed that. So, uh, and uh, Ravi. Yes, sir. And he's any me. I'm, I'm just going through my talk. Uh, Ravi. Yes, sir. And my dear uh, uh, other colleagues from Irimi and uh, my colleagues from Nair, led by. Yagnik. Fire in coaches. Fire in coaches is a problem which has been. We are we are we have been fighting with this issue for a long time, and um, a lot of things have been done. And Sri D C Sharma and Sri R K Mangla they have touched on those points. Um, but this issue doesn't go away from our radars. It continues to be a live issue. So a lot has been said by our two AMs and uh, I only wanted to say a few things. Number one, there, there, there are lots of specs, but let us recognize that it takes time to for the industry to settle into the a particular spec and to mature the sources to be able to do a proper job as per that spec. So spec has to have a certain stability. And uh, the other thing is that compliance, is, when we are uh, developing a new spec, then of course there's a type test in the process of approving sources for that. But uh, mass production is put through acceptance test or routine test. So there are limits to what can be checked in such an inspection. And there are also limits to how many more items you can add, taking out items which are in the battery of type test type of test, bringing it into routine. It uh, has cost implications. It has the production line gets affected because you know everything takes its own time. So those things are there. So, but yes, inspection, which is done on the mass production, bulk production, that needs to be of proper uh, standard and quality. Because I'm aware that there is a lot of lacking in that particular area. Of course, if there is something which the firm is doing, which cannot is not, not detectable by routine test and it will only get surfaced if I do type test. So those things would obviously not get noticed in a routine test and there are issues. But uh, an RDSO also has procedures for, you know, doing some kind of consistency checks so that goes on. So yes, specs, whether we are, we are having the correct spec specs, whether we are inspecting things 
properly in bulk inspection, whether we are doing consistency checks as well as we should do. These things are important. And uh, this issue has many, many dimensions. And uh, that is one aspect then, you know, as has been pointed out by our two aims, following the instructions and being watchful that they are being followed. That's very, very important because once you, we don't, once we don't manage to eliminate the root cause of fire, then it's only a question, materials may differ in this respect that one material gives you more time for evacuation, one gives you less time. That's the, the parameter on which things will, materials will differ, but eventually the hazard will be there. So root cause investigation of fire incidents without getting aligned in any particular direction that, you know, I have to come out with this finding. So, honest findings are required and uh, because unless we do that we'll keep getting these things then ours is a very porous system unlike developed countries where you know where the depots and other major activities are there they're all walled and they're all security checks nobody can get in but our system is very very porous people can get into the system from anywhere so the need for surprise checks because there may be situations in which you know some unauthorized persons are getting access and uh, once unauthorized people are getting access they may have various things somebody may just want to somehow get access into a coach and spend the night and just be gone in the morning somebody may have some mischief in mind so all those things are there so inspections and surprise visits by executives and RPF that is necessary because as I said, we, do, we have a porous system. So there's a slew, of, there's a range of things that we need to do and uh, uh, all that needs to be done because as was pointed out by uh, one of our spe speakers who spoke earlier that in Shinkansen we didn't have an incident for long years, six, almost 60 years they didn't have an incident. Whereas the technology and the fire worthiness and fire retard, retard, retarding properties, you know, they have evolved over years. 60 years back, the, that kind of, those kind of materials would not have been there. So attacking root cause is very, very important and I I'm pleased to share with you all that NAIR is already organizing courses. We've done three modules in which we try to train the officers on te technique of doing, you know, root cause analysis from safety for safety incidents. I hope that will also gel and with this uh, issue will help us in this direction. So on, as has been pointed out by Ravi that on this occasion, there's we will be covering the inspection part, the bulk inspection part, which is done by rights. Then we will be, yeah, Mr. Yagnik will be talking something about the specs. And then there will be a lecture by industry expert, Mr. Uh, Shailesh. We look forward to that. And uh, I would request all the participants to please interact a lot because you have wealth of information. It is not that these people who will speak today, they are the, you know, the end point in knowledge or, you know, giving of experiences. So all of you have wealth of information <clears throat> and it's only when you interact, you bring forth your points, any exercise like this becomes productive and useful. And as we go through, yes, uh, our aims have said there should be reruns of this program. We will do that and maybe there can be differing uh, coverage on each occasion. Now, today we have focused on routine inspection and maybe an aspect, aspect and a little bit of you know industry input. Maybe next time when we do it, uh, then we focus on certain issues. So like that, we keep uh, covering the entire dimension of this whole uh, subject of uh, fire safety and fire prevention. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, once again, thanks. I'm really pleased to see the number of participants, 166. So, Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you very much, sir. At the outset, you really commented nicely on the number of participants that shows how much key we are in trying to improve the system and trying to find out ways and means of solutions to our problems which pervade us all us all of us. Um, I look forward to see DG safety, but I think DG safety is yet to join. So and even CRB is yet to join. So while we will not wait, I will request Sri. Um, Sandeep Jain to continue with his uh, presentation and as and when uh, DG Safety and uh, CRB join sirs, we will have the session. Um, I will only request uh, Sri Sandeep Jain to be prepared for say, any interim interruptions, small interruption in case it is required. So we can over to Sri Sandeep Jain. I think I think Ravind. Yes, you have stopped it. Uh, well, then I will be able to share my presentation. Sir, your presentation is currently visible, sir. It is visible. Respected senior officers and dear colleagues, a very good morning to all of you. I am Sandeep Jain, TGM Northern Region uh, Rights. Uh, today, I am going to present a brief regarding issue involved in the uh, inspection of fire retardant furnishing items of passenger coaches. My presentation uh, has uh, uh, we'll first introduce about right inspection process and then on the main topic of FR inspection issued involved uh, and the uh, suggestion for improvement. Uh, Rights was uh, uh, created in 1974 by Indian Railways mainly for the uh, need of third party inspection. Today, Rights is a global uh, consultancy organization. Let me interrupt uh, Sandeep Jain. Yes, sir. Uh, our DG safety, Sri Ravindra Gupta has joined us. So we will just, uh, you still not begun, so we can take off a bit later. So I request uh, Sri Ravindra Gupta sir, to kindly address us. Good, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm morning, sorry, sir. I had some hiccups morning, in sir. joining the meeting. Good morning, sir. Some problem with the link. So there was some delay in coming in. So, uh, one possibility is that this uh, um, presentation, which is going on, can finish and I can talk after that as convenient to you all. So, just one thing, sir, because uh, CR will be joining immediately after you, sir. Okay, so, okay. we are just not started it. Uh, so, just uh, two, two to three minutes on the presentation. So, we would like to okay. have your session first, sir. Okay. So, uh, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is a very relevant topic we have gathered to discuss today. As all of you know that in this year, fire accidents have assumed a very uh, important place. A fire accident is always one of the most important type of accidents because it has extremely adverse impact on image and also it represents a danger of another level. More so when this occurs on passenger trains. It brings a lot of ill reputation to railways and a lot of discomfort and fear in the public who's traveling by these trains. So in this year, I find that total accidents which have occurred in 1920, there were 20. In 2021, there were less trains, so there were eight. But in this year, we have already reached 13. 13 is a large number and total 41 cases in last three years says that we have to do a lot about improving. So fire accidents can be tackled in a four pronged approach. Number one prong where the coach engineers come in is to design the coaches in such a way that they are built to resist fire. And in case a fire occurs because of some reason, it detects and possibly suppresses the fire. 
So this is the prong number one, getting the assets ready for fire. Also with this comes building safety uh, devices, safety procedures in the electrical circuits so that in event of any untoward incident, something which can lead to fire, such incident that reported, logged, also can get, uh, uh, can initiate a safety uh, interlock, which suppresses the reason for fire. Third element, second element comes after the coach design, the detection and response of the people who are on board. So whenever fire occurs, the people who are, the railwaymen who are on board, their response, their ability to uh, interact with the systems of coach, that means cutting off power, using the fire extinguisher, evacuating passengers, stopping the train also to begin with, all these become very important. So this involves training of people who are on board. Each one of them has to be a uh, fire, uh, fireman in the time of emergency. So we, we have to work uh, specifically on building skills of these people. Third element comes, the arrangements which are there on the station and the fixed arrangements. Fire incidents do occur, but then worse is if we are not able to control in time. We've been finding that last some fire accidents, once it starts, we lose one or two coaches definitely. Loss is total and extent of loss to railways is quite high. Fourth element comes, protecting railway assets and premises, which includes depots, yards, stabling places from ingress of people. Rake locking is a procedure which is followed, but I believe that it is getting followed half-heartedly all over the place. There are a number of incidents where in spite of so-called locking of the rakes, people come inside and they use it as their home for uh, during the stabling period. This is very important in case of accidents where, which are seen in trains which are stable for longer time. So wherever we are uh, stabling away from the main depot and for longer periods over exceeding maybe 12 hours, 24 hours, there, there has to be a very effective arrangement for protecting these rakes. These rakes are quite a valuable property. A normal rake will cost how much? This rake will cost almost 50 crore rupees. So that it's a property worth protecting. It cannot lie just like that. In a couple of cases, this was absorbed. Along with this comes the propensity of people to smoke in running trains. We have found that fire can be started from a matchstick. It is possible that a single matchstick can start fire. And if it's thrown at wrong place, and if the situations nurture it. For example, in one case, a matchstick or maybe a cigarette butt was thrown in a dustbin full of waste which was getting fanned by exhaust fan. So it caught fire. And then once the configuration was there, it burnt everything around it. So there is a need for very holistic uh, approach to controlling these fire incident. It is important. And I'm very happy that uh, Irmi has arranged this seminar. It should attract the attention of all coach engineers, maintainers, builders alike, and designers towards this important topic. And I'm uh, sure something good will come out. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, now uh, we shall look forward to CRB, sir. And CRB, sir, join us. I think CRB is yet to join. And hello. So CRD sir is yet to join, so we shall uh, request uh, Mr. Uh, Sandeep Jain sir to continue with the presentation. Rights is uh, a global uh, consultancy organization and it provides uh, uh, information in the field of transport and infrastructure. 
is a export arm of Indian Railways for uh, rolling stock, a railway rolling stock, and it also has a manufacturing facility uh, in JV with sale at Pulti, and uh, its subsidiary RENCL is um, in renewable energy generation field and power procurement and energy. Vice not coming, no? Vice Sir, you are not very much audible. Check three. Sandeep Ji, sir. Take for sir. Yes. You are not audible. Uh, sir, if, if I am audible now. Ah, yes, you are now audible. You are now audible, carry on. Uh, in uh, rights, uh, quality assurance division, uh, we are providing mainly services for third party inspection, vendor capacity and capability assessment, and, and labor testing. In uh, quality assurance division, there are five, five regional, uh, regional offices. Uh, their head office uh, offices are at Delhi, Mumbai, Calcutta, Chennai, and Bilai. And we have a, a team of over 300 full-time engineers. Uh, and uh, we are conducting around 80,000 inspection annually uh, over at the vendor premises of more than 25,000 vendors. Hello. Clients, prestigious clients are Indian Railways. Hello. Use state government etc. Uh, recently, we got these prestigious awards. Uh, uh, we have ISO 9001, 7020, uh, and uh, ISO 7025 certificates. Our core strength is our uh, uh, engineers, which are uh, spread across uh, Pan India. Uh, for regular engineers, we take uh, engineers from reputed uh, uh, institutes like IIT and NIT, and uh, we also take uh, engineers on deputation from railway defense and various other organizations and train them properly uh, in all uh, area, relevant area, FR, paint, NDT, etc. And, um, uh, th and these are uh, so guided and supervised uh, by controlling managers through super check, surprise check, uh, their case are scrutinized and their, uh, even daily work plan, uh, plan is closely monitored and uh, rights uh, queue has approved over 4,500 number inspection test plans. So all FR items are inspected only through uh, approved check sheets, uh, which we uh, call, um, for inspection test plan, we normally call here check sheets. So uh, all critical items are uh, uh, GGM of a re uh, region uh, before uh, I again the audio is cut off. And we have also uh, um, interfaced uh, our uh, IPS server with the uh, Chris server. All, all uh, IREPS POs are daily pushed to uh, IBS server, and uh, all POs are registered uh, where uh, rights is an inspection agency. And then uh, vendor registers the call, and then automatic call marking is there. Like, uh, uh, these calls are automatically marked uh, by IBS to the nominated eyes. And then uh, uh, when I conduct the inspection, then uh, various uh, uh, inspection updates are available to all uh, vendor and clients, like uh, is it pending, is it under inspection or under lab testing? And when inspection is complete, then uh, uh, these digital ICs are uh, generated through IBS and it is uh, it can be used by all the stakeholders or even inspection test plan can be viewed by uh, all stakeholders for which we have uh, we have given controlled access to our uh, all stakeholders 
and full access is given uh, is available with management and controlling manager um, controlling managers for uh, viewing online uh, monitoring and uh, controlling the inspection activities this is our inspection workflow from uh, registration of po to issue of ic these are the main steps uh, registration of PO, call registration, call marking. Then uh, I goes to at inspection site. He first verifies the lot, uh, sees their internal uh, quality record is proper, and then uh, takes sample and uh, sees the lot. And then after first he does uh, visual and dimensional inspection, and then witnesses test if uh, test facilities are available at the vendor premises. Otherwise, send the sample at Rice Lab for. Uh, uh, testing and then if uh, once inspection is complete, he issues the digital IC. They are all active inspection activities are closely monitored by the CMs. And uh, once the consignment reach at the customer uh, uh, and we see for uh, look for the customer feedback and if there is any complaint, then uh, joint inspection is carried out. Overall rejection analysis of rights is uh, we are we carry out around 80,000 inspection annually, and uh, 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 more than two percent uh, uh, bad material is uh, rejected at the vendor premises only by our inspecting engineers. And uh, signee rejection is around 0.08 percent. We target to achieve the zero goal, but uh, we strive and uh, take uh, system improvements. Uh, and a lot of counseling to the eye, uh, approving check sheets regularly, and make a lot of efforts for uh, goal of zero consigning complaint. So today, uh, the main topic of today is the FR item inspections. Uh, around 72 vendors are there in various regions. Uh, maximum number of vendors are in northern region. But uh, maximum calls are uh, with Western region for FR items. Uh, around 40 items are there for uh, uh, as per our IBS, and uh, uh, total 22 governing specs are there. And around 1500 calls we are doing annually uh, for this FR item testing. These are the major FR items: compact, FR cotton. Uh, uh, FR upholstery, uh, leather, uh, free vaccine, DTBB, Recron, PPC flooring, vestibules, NAFTC, FRP paneling, HPL sheet, silicon, new foam, uh, and uh, FRP windows, etc. In above items, FR tests are specified as a substance test, and uh, inspections are done at, as per approved ITP based on these specs. Placed on FR, uh, place orders on FR item on vendor approved by RDSOs and PU and rights conduct inspection as per the governing specification on sampling basis at the testing of the vendors approved by RDSO and PUs. Various FR tests and test methods are for main, main five. Uh, Tests are uh, FR tests are there. Resistance to spread of flame, toxicity, deterioration of visibility due to smoke, uh, limiting oxygen index, and heat release test. So uh, test method are mainly from UIC, NCD, uh, and uh, IS, ASTM. Uh, these are conventional tests. And now, Sandeep. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Sandeep. Uh... These tests are in the order of importance. Can we say the first test is most important, then second, third, from the point of view of uh, saving of human life? Sir, ऐसा तो नहीं कह सकते हैं सर ये मतलब पांचवा स्पेसिफाइड है और सबका इम्पोर्टेंस फायर रेजिस्टेंस का जैसे मेन हमारा रहता है कि जो हमें पंद्रह मिनट से आधे घंटे का टाइम मिल जाए क्योंकि अगर कोच में ये सारे टेस्ट जो हैं सारे लिमिटेड टाइम के लिए लिमिटेड फ्लेम के लिए फ्लेम उसमें ठीक है एज एन एक्सपर्ट राइट्स एज एन एक्सपर्ट ऑन फायर टेस्टिंग 
you should be able to tell that uh, the order of importance is this much and uh, from the point of view of saving of life sir can i can i just interrupt yes. sir yes yes sir, sir can i just interrupt sir a minute uh, honorable uh, sri uh, vikas tripathi crb has just joined sir and uh, with your, with your permission sir uh, shall we continue this discussion or would you like to give the address sir good morning sir good morning good morning sir i just want to say few things then you can continue with the discussions yes, so uh, we I, will it is good that this webinar has been uh, organized but for passenger coaches but the what i want to convey is all these technical details you can go through you might have gone all along but uh, what i feel or what i have understood that if if the uh, fire is there then uh, within 15 20 minutes or 30 minutes the coach will uh, get totally burned and our specification is also not like that it is only uh, that that people will get some chance of 15 20 minutes or 30 minutes so that they may move out of the train or the coach and then the coach will burn so uh, all those technical details you see how these things can be improved or what can be done i i do not want to go into those details but then i have to say that why the fire should take place and there are large number of fire uh, large number of fire cases already taking place the uh, total figure what i have been told from april 19 there has been total 41 fire cases in train and there may be many not reported cases so these 41 cases are reported cases and the uh, worst part is that 21 22 has got 13 cases so the fire ca cases are continuing unabated that is very serious and uh, if you if you go uh, in further details from first january to march till date seven cases have taken place so i don't think these these uh, datas or these uh, incidences are indicating that our maintenance in the uh, field definitely require many things we have done a drive also it was very clear that all the safety equipments all the safety relays should not be bypassed many were found bypassed so uh, i i i fail to understand what we are going to do the inquiry if you go through the inquiry report every inquiry most of the inquiry report will say that railway is not responsible something uh, has been sent by god who has got it done so all these answers all these uh, reports all these findings are not up to the mark and are not required let us think very seriously that no fire should take place and it happens the our design is at least that good that the fire will not take take place on its own there are safety uh, provisions there are safety uh, equipments but we are running them bypass and after that i feel we are making some lipa poti ki kya ho gaya kaise ho gaya kisi ne beedi dal di hogi kisi ne cigarette dal diya hoga matlab beedi aur cigarette dal kar ke aag lagana itna aasan nahi hota hai theek hai kahi ikattha ho gaya kuch ho gaya kahi se dhuan niklega beedi aur cigarette mein flame nahi hoti yaar so every, and in a coach people are traveling everything is moving around so aap log aur wo bhi beedi cigarette ka ya to proof de do आप लोग तो ये रिपोर्ट में लिखते हो कि ऐसा हुआ होगा कोई ये नहीं बोलता है क्या हुआ सब ये बोलते हैं ऐसा हुआ होगा तो हमेशा हुआ होगा से हम लोगों का काम चलेगा नहीं एंड अभी तो जनवरी से मार्च तो जाड़े का टाइम था अभी तो अप्रैल मई जून ये तो सीवियर गर्मी का टाइम है और मैं ये कहना चाहता हूँ कि अपने डी सेट्स आप लोग देख लीजिए डी सेट्स में क्या काम होने हैं कैसे होने हैं क्या होना है सारी चीज़ें हो जाए नथिंग शुड गेट बाई पास नथिंग शुड गेट बाई पास आई एम वेरी क्लियर आई होप पी एच ओ डीज आर ऑल्सो इन टू दिस वी सी 
दे शुड मेक देयर ऑफिसर्स वेरी क्लियर कि अगर उनके यहाँ कोई कोच में कुछ भी सेफ्टी इक्विपमेंट बाईपास मिला तो डायरेक्ट उनकी रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी फिक्सअप होगी दे हैव टू बी वेरी वेरी क्लियर इट हैज टू बी वेरी वेरी क्लियर कि किसी भी सेफ्टी रिले को किसी भी सेफ्टी सेंसर को बाईपास करने का अधिकार किसी के पास है नहीं तो अगर बाईपास करके लोग चला रहे हैं तो वापस उनको सर्विस में कर लीजिए आई होप जो ड्राइव चली थी उसमें आप लोगों ने सर्विस में जरूर कर लिए होंगे अगर कहीं कुछ बचा हुआ है तो उसको वापस सर्विस में कर लीजिए बट फायर इंसिडेंसेस होनी नहीं चाहिए एंड आई विल डेफिनेटली गेट इट चेकड अप इन सर्टन रेक्स ऑल्सो कि वो सेफ्टी बाईपास हैं या नहीं है जरूरत पड़ेगी मैं खुद भी जाके चेक करूंगा बट अगर मुझे कोई चीज बाहर मिली कोई चीज बाईपास मिली देन देयर विल बी सीरियस रिपरकशन आई डू नॉट वॉन्ट टू यूज दिस लैंग्वेज बट मुझे मेरी मजबूरी है बिकॉज आई एम स्टिल टोल्ड आई हैव नॉट चेक माई सेल्फ बट आई एम स्टिल टोल्ड देर आर रनिंग विद बाई पास सेफ्टी so all uh, phods please ensure that all the safety equipments in the coaches in the dv sets and all the attention required to be given to them is completed mere hisab se to shayad summer precaution completely ho raha hoga sabka by april everything should be completed so this has to be this has to be completed कोई भी अगर फेलियर है कोई भी अगर चल रहा है गेट द सर्टिफिकेशन फ्रॉम ऑल योर ब्रांच ऑफिसर्स दैट वॉट्स ओवर कोचेज दे आर मेंटेनिंग दे आर इन गुड फिटिल एंड एवरीथिंग इज इन प्लेस विद रेस्पेक्ट टू द फायर सेफ्टी एवरीथिंग इज इन प्लेस इफ इट इज नॉट इन प्लेस देन दे शुड गिव द टी डी सी वॉट दे आर डूइंग हाउ दे आर डूइंग एंड वेन दे विल बी एबल टू कम्प्लीट इट दैट इज वॉट आई job to get it done through the paraphernalia under them it is their job they have to look it they have to cross check it they have to see it who is doing what it is their responsibility and think very seriously about it very seriously it has to be taken very very seriously you know nothing will be tolerated because we are doing our safety drive from i think 25th of january continuously continuing it this part is also the part of the drive although it is day to day maintenance which has to take care of these things but then somehow the laxity has come in those laxity i think must have gone away but please see that it it actually goes away and no coach runs in the isolated safety equipment isolated condition we we are responsible people we should act responsibly there is of course there are many issues to be uh, discussed this webinar i hope will help you all in finalizing certain issues in deciding something that what further improvement is to be done but then improvement definitely should be done improvements definitely should be decided discussed but then whatever we have achieved till date whatever we have committed that this will be available in the coaches has to remain available that has to be ensured we can't move uh, we can't moving uh, we can't go on moving ahead that picha piche to jo karna tha wo humne kar liya ab wo relay isolated hai to isolated rehne do short circuit hota hai to hone do wo to part of hamara maintenance hai aur aage ka improvement hum baat karte rahenge तो हम आगे के इम्प्रूवमेंट की बात बिल्कुल करें और आगे का इम्प्रूवमेंट हमको कराना भी चाहिए बट जो पीछे हमने इम्प्रूवमेंट्स कर लिए हैं जो पीछे हमने डिसाइड कर लिया है उसको 100 परसेंट इम्प्लीमेंटेशन इंश्योर कर लें रेस्ट आई आई यू पीपल स्टार्ट योर टेक्निकल डिस्कशन एंड आई होप दी सेमिनार विल डेफिनेटली गिव मेनी आइडियाज गिव मेनी सजेशंस थ्रू विच विच विल बी हेल्पफुल फॉर आस which will be helpful in improving the condition whatever in whatever uh, condition we have today so please go ahead
Thank you very much, sir, for your enlightening lecture and speech. Um, we will keep up to your, uh, to your, to your expectations, sir. And uh, we have a full uh, uh, host of all the divisional authorities and the host of uh, journal authorities as well as RDSO, PUs. And we sh will sure live up to your expectation and first place, no bypass on safety systems. And also ensure is, uh, some of the questions are taken. Not my expectation. This should become expectation of the PHOD and ex expectation of exactly, the grade officer who is there. So they should exactly, make sir. their expectation the same what I am what I have uh, asked. Exactly, sir. Exactly, sir. We will live up to your expectations, yes, sir. And also raise our expectation levels in the uh, journal railways in the field and implement. Uh, what you have said in letter and spirits, right, sir? So, can I now request uh, Sandeep Jain to continue with this presentation? Sandeep Jain? Sir, so, this uh, uh, test, hai, sir, jaise resistance to spread of flame. Hai, uh, so, ये इसका main purpose है कि जो fire है वो तेजी से ना फैले। Toxicity है इसका main purpose है कि जो इस passenger हैं वो gases जो अगर आग लगे तो इतनी toxic ना हो कि वो बिल्कुल बेहोश ही हो जाएं। उनको निकलने का कुछ time मिले। तो ये toxicity vestibule को छोड़के बाकी सब में जैसे less than one है अभी तक जितने test हैं। Deterioration to visibility due to smoke है कि इतना ज़्यादा धुआँ और अंधेरा उनके आगे ना जाए कि उन्हें कुछ दिखे ही ना, उन्हें निकलने का escape route मिल जाए। Limiting oxygen index है, वो उसका purpose ये है कि जैसे air में 21 percent oxygen है, तो ये normally 28 से ऊपर रहती है कि oxygen अगर जो control condition होगी, तो 28 से ऊपर ही जलेगा। लेकिन जो ये है, ये मतलब जैसे तीन मिनट के लिए fire रखा जाता है या control fire होता है, जब actual coach होती है, तो continuous fire और बहुत ज़्यादे एयर का इन्फ्लो होता है तो उस समय बस इनका परपस ये या हीट रिलीज रेट ईएन फोर 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 डबल फाइव फोर फाइव से है कि उतनी ज़्यादा हीट नहीं रिलीज होनी चाहिए तुरंत कि उन्हें मतलब निकलने का भी टाइम ना मिले तो इन सब टेस्ट का परपस ये है कि मतलब अगर एक्चुअल पार कंडीशन होगी तो इनका ये फायर प्रूफ नहीं है सिर्फ फायर रिटार्डेंट हैं ये प्रॉपर्टीज टेस्ट करने के लिए और ये सिर्फ एक कंट्रोल्ड कंडीशन में ये टेस्ट होते हैं ये इक्विपमेंट्स हैं जो लिमिटिंग ऑक्सीजन इंडेक्स आई थिंक आई एम क्लियर टू एवरीवन यस संदीप गो हेड गो Limiting oxygen index, uh, uh, toxicity, resistance to spread of flame, ये सब conventional tests हैं और इनकी cost भी बहुत ज़्यादा नहीं है Indian equipment ये around दो लाख में आ जाते हैं EN four double five four five के जो equipment हैं वो थोड़े costly हैं जैसे HRR अब ये सब में include कर दिया गया है already ये around बीस तीस लाख का आता है uh, heat release rate का और क्योंकि बाकी सब में मैनुअल इंटरवेंशन बहुत ज़्यादे है जैसे टॉक्सिक टॉक्सिसिटी का इसमें 14 गैसेस मेजर करनी है तो वो गैस का कलर कितना चेंज होता है और उन्हें स्पेक के बारे में लैब को कितना आइडिया है तो उसमें मैनुअल इंटरवेंशन बहुत ज़्यादे है तो अभी मतलब फ्यूचर एक कमेंटी � फोर डबल फाइव फोर फाइव इम्प्लीमेंट हो चुका है तो हमें भी अपने स्टैंडर्ड रिवाइज करना है इसके लिए ऑलरेडी एक कमेटी है सीनियर ऑफिसर्स की जो इस और देख रही है फिर नॉर्मली अभी तक आईसीवाई स्ट्रेसिबिलिटी रेलवे मेंटेन नहीं कर रहा है और आ, हम देखते हैं कि काफी सारा मटेरियल अर्जेंसी में रेलवे डब्ल्यू या कंसाइनी पे भी ले लेता है कुछ हमने वेंडर से ही डिटेल ली हमारे पास एग्जैक्ट डिटेल तो नहीं होती लेकिन अराउंड 242 लॉट उन्होंने ये मटेरियल लिया है जो अराउंड 1000 कोचेस के आसपास का मटेरियल विदाउट राइट्स इंस्पेक्शन भी ले लिया गया है और 
अगर हम रिजेक्शन देखें रिजेक्शन बाई कंसाइनी और राइट से तो अभी तक 2019 से टोटल कंसाइनी रिजेक्शन हमें 11 मिले हैं लेकिन इसमें एक बहुत बड़ी प्रॉब्लम ये है कि जो वेंडर की अप्रूव प्रोमाइस हैं उसमें तो राइट जैसे बहुत क्रिटिकल आइटम एफआर को लेते हुए अपना सुपर चेक भी बहुत करार रेगुलर कराता है और सब स्टैंडर्ड मोस्ट स्ट्रिंजेंट इंस्पेक्शन करता है लेकिन जब वो थर्ड पार्टी लैब में जाते हैं तो यही इसका एग्जाम्पल है कि जैसे पहले वेंडर ने या तो अपनी प्रमाइस पी यू ने या तो अपनी प्रमाइस में चेक करके या एक थर्ड पार्टी लैब में करके पहले रिजेक्ट किया तो जब जी के दौरान उन्होंने ही कंसाइनी ने दूसरी लैब में भेजा तो मटीरियल पास हो गया तो ऐसा नॉर्दर्न में जैसे तीन रिजेक्ट किए थे तो दो मटीरियल एक्सेप्ट हो गए जब थर्ड पार्टी लैब जी के दौरान उन्होंने ही भेजा और वो पास हो गए और एक का वो वेंडर से कंसाइनी ने वो भेजा ही नहीं वो वेंडर को उन्होंने ये रिप्लेस करा दिया तो नॉट ऑन जॉइंट अकाउंट राइट्स अकाउंट क्लोज किया डब्ल्यू में चार ऐसे केसेस हुए थे जब जी के दौरान भेजे गए थर्ड पार्टी लैब में तो ये चारों के चारों एक्सेप्ट हो गए और ई में चार केस थे जो कि ये वंडर लेमिनेट के थे ये अंडर आर्बिट्रेशन चल रहे हैं और इसके लिए अभी ये आई हुआ नहीं है कंप्लीट नहीं हुआ है हम चेस तो कर रहे हैं और ये जो राइट्स के कंट्रोलिंग आईज और कंट्रोलिंग मैनेजर सुपर चेक के दौरान जो टोटल अभी तक 22 टू रिजेक्शन्स जो ये टेस्ट जो ये पांच टेस्ट थे उनके पैरामीटर पे जो नहीं ठीक निकले समारा ये जबकि हम पहले इंटरनल क्वालिटी सारे वेंडर से कहते हैं कि पहले हम उनका चेक करते हैं प्रॉपर इंटरनल टेस्ट करते हैं उसके बाद भी ये 22 टेस्ट ऐसे 22 लॉट ऐसे निकले जो कि रिजेक्ट किए जिनकी जिनमें ये प्रॉपर्टीज प्रॉपर नहीं पाई गई ये उनकी डिटेल है जो हमने सॉरी टू इंटरप्ट संदीप आई एम इंटरप्टिंग यस सर लुक दिस डिस्कशन इज वेस्टिंग टाइम लेट मी टेल यू वेरी क्लियरली रिसेंटली वी गॉट सम मटीरियल विच वॉज राइट इंस्पेक्टेड supplied used on uh, coaches and we found that oxygen limiting index was less we went little deeper we found that there is a additive which is costly which is required for obtaining it definitely there is no terror of inspecting agency this statistics has no meaning if in spite of you being there as i mean to say rights being there as inspector vendors are able to cut corners we will keep on improving our specification but if we are not able to implement the specification we have in hand then this discussion are, uh, is of no use i find that vendors are giving what they want and this business of one material failing once and passing again this is absolutely undesirable and not done this should result in a punishment either to the vendor or to the person who is testing this this is a very serious matter and we had asked for second thing i want to raise to rights is we had asked rcf to conduct certain tests kitne mahine ho gaye bhai kitne mahine ho gaye teen mahine ho gaye not no it has seen no light of the day nothing has come sir wo site is not done sir wo main aage thoda sa kindly meri do teen slide hai aap continue aap continue kariye but point is that this exercise will avail of, uh, of nothing If we are not addressing the points exactly on the head and hit a hammer, yes, sir. Please continue. Yes, sir. thank you, sir. Sir, ये rejection किए थे. Sir, ये super checks हैं, sir. इसमें nineteen twenty में thirty three थे और अभी critical criticality देखते हुए double से भी ज़्यादा हमने super checks किए हैं जो controlling manager और regional ad level पे हुए. सर मेजर डिस्क्रिपेंसी इसमें छः जो ये 150 से ज़्यादा सुपर चेक हुए हैं उसमें छः केसेस में ऐसा पाया गया कि जिसमें टॉक्सिसिटी या हेलो आई या स्प्रेड ऑफ फ्लेम वगैरह से फेल हुआ है मटेरियल बाकी ये इवन कंट्रोलिंग मैनेजर और रीजनल हेड के बाद जाने के बाद भी मोर देन मतलब अराउंड वन केसेज में ये पास हुआ है मटीरियल और उसमें जो ये डिस्क्रिपेंसी थी सर ये मेजर इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर रिलेटेड थी जैसे आ, कुछ उसमें इक्विपमेंट मान लिया फ्लो फ्लो मीटर या जो थर्मोमीटर था वो अनकैलिब्रेटेड लगा दिया था बल्ब 150 फिफ्टी वाट लगा दिया था जबकि 100 वाट होना चाहिए इस डिटोरेशन ऑफ विजिबिलिटी देखने के लिए सक्शन पंप जो टॉक्सिसिटी का उसका जो टेस्ट है वो उसमें फेल कर रहा था लीकेज था उसका पंप चेंज करवाया था फिर 
लीकेज था तो इस तरह के ये सारे इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर रिलेटेड सर डिफेक्ट थे डिस्क्रिपेंसी की और सर जो ये मेजर अभी जो इशू है एफ आर टेस्टिंग का कि ये लैब इसका जो वेंडर जैसे सुपर चेक के बाद मटेरियल पास हो जाता है आर डी एस ओ या यू की अप्रूव टेस्टिंग फैसिलिटी है लेकिन जब थर्ड पार्टी लैब में भेजते हैं तो कई बार ये फेल होता है और ये पहले तो ये फैसिलिटी सर 2016 तक तो आर डी करता था उस समय ये ऑडिट भी करता था कि ये फर्म की फैसिलिटी में वो खुद भी टेस्ट करता था बाहर एक लैब में बेच के वहां भी टेस्ट कराता था लेकिन वो राइट की रिक्वेस्ट के बाद भी वो रिजल्ट हमसे शेयर नहीं होते थे और आप यू अप्रूविंग अथॉरिटी है और इसका सर जो टेस्ट है डिफरेंट लैब में वेरिएशन है सर ये हाई पावर कमेटी जो एक पी आई में हुई थी उसके ऊपर जो बनाई थी उसमें भी ये इन्होंने एक मिनट यार जस्ट जस्ट वन मिनट डीजी सेफ्टी साहब मेरी एक और प्रिंसिपल सेक्रेटरी टू पीएम से मीटिंग है सो आई एम मूविंग आउट ऑफ दिस हेलो हेलो राइट सर राइट सर ओके ओके यू यू कंटिन्यू एंड गेट इट डन प्रॉपर बिल सर ओके 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 थैंक यू सर सर ये फिर जो ये हाई लेवल कमेटी थी सर उसका सेम सैंपल सर एक सीपीआरआई बेंगलोर लैब में भेजा गया था और एक ये सीपेट हैदराबाद में भेजा गया था तो एक में टॉक्सिसिटी 1.5 आई और एक में 17.47 आया तो और एक बार ये आर डी एस ओ ने भी सर ज्वाइंट चेक करा था वेंडर्स के साथ थर्ड पार्टी लैब में और उसमें ये पाया गया कि एक तो उनकी क्योंकि एफ आर के टेस्ट सर वही करने होते हैं नॉर्मली और सिर्फ जब रेलवे सैंपल लेके बाहर भेजता है तभी सिर्फ इन थर्ड पार्टी लैब में जाते हैं तो इनके पास बहुत रेयर जाते हैं सैंपल्स तो एक तो इनकी जो स्पेसिफिकेशन में क्योंकि कई सारे स्पेसिफिकेशन इन्वॉल्व होते हैं सर टेस्ट मेथड और स्पेसिफिकेशन तो इन लैब की अंडरस्टैंडिंग उतनी अच्छी नहीं है सर और उनके जो पर्सनल हैं वो भी इतने एक्सपर्ट नहीं है ये टेस्ट करने में और जो गैस डिटेक्टर ट्यूब है सर इसमें भी जैसे यूनिफॉर्स और डिटेक्टर ये जो जर्मन की ट्यूब है ड्रैगर इन दो में अगर एक्यूरेसी लेवल का भी रिटर्न है कि ये अराउंड पच्चीस परसेंट का अंतर है तो ये सर संदीप जी संदीप जी आई हैव इंटरप्ट यू अगेन यू आर यू आर सेइंग दैट ऑल प्रॉब्लम्स लाई इन द इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर फैसिलिटी और ट्रेनिंग ऑफ द लैब्स देर फॉर यू आर गिविंग ए क्लीन चेक टू द मटीरियल इन एवरी वे आई डोंट अंडरस्टैंड आई डोंट अंडरस्टैंड वॉट प्रेजेंटेशन आर यू गिविंग एंड वेयर इज इट ड्राइविंग वॉट इज इट ट्राइंग टू अचीव You are saying that material is hunky dory. Only the infrastructural problem is there, or the third-party labs are not equipped. Then I think this approach is absolutely trash. I'm I'm quite unhappy with this. I am telling you very frankly. Sir, I don't know where this presentation is going. You better sir, redirect this presentation or quit. Can I, can I add a line on this? Because I'll be covering this part that how uncertain these yeah, I mean, are highly subjected, and it is not the problem of lab only or personal only. But the nature of the basic test is so variable that same person doing same test in the same expert level can get three different results within a day. So I will be covering this part in my uh, uh, presentation, if you permit. So uh, this is a real problem which Sandeep is telling that the uh, results are not consistent even within the same lab on the same day. That is what I want to. so that is why we take the three samples and then we take the average reading then we average out the results uh, only to uh, take care of the inconsistencies in the test results and all these labs they have been certified by rdso uh, and they are being uh, they have been circulated to all uh, the railways and the production unit by rdso uh, so okay. testing them in a single stroke i think uh, it's not a good approach Uh, can I can I uh, just uh, uh, permit uh, that uh, time for my presentation to finish? I think lot of things have been discussed. Sir, Yagni sir, Yagni sir, I, one minute, I just want to say that what is the meaning of average? When there is such a wild variation, average means that when the points are closely stacked together, then average gives you a more accurate feel. So there are two methods. One is that you check it by FTI, uh, FTIR. That is the Fourier Transfer Factor. There are two methods. One is that you check it by FTIR. That is the Fourier Transfer Infrared uh, Spectrometer. Which is now available, but when this spec was developed, NCD one four zero nine, these methods was just not available. 
and we were doing the testing through colometric tubes. And this colometric tube is highly subjective. It is just like assessing a painting, how good a painting is. Now, if you I give a paper to you and tell you, uh, ask you how much white it is, perhaps uh, 50 years ago, you would not have been able to do it. Today, you are able to do it because you have a lot of optical uh, measurement systems and uh, computerized modeling is available. But 30 years or 40 years back, this was just not available. So this change has to be appreciated that the test which we were specifying, although it was very stringent, but the method of check checking was, and it is an internationally uh, accepted fact that it was subjective. So I would be covering this part in my presentation. Please continue. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, uh, in all the specification related to uh, uh, FRI, it is specified that RDSOPU railway may take sample of FR items for the premises to cross check in the third party lab. Uh, but the same authority is not given to rights. Uh, uh, director of Vigilance Railway Board, the letters we have said, they say that rights ko ka mandate. Uh, Lab me hai, you know, even SBU had go lika letter vigilance uh, nahi ki third party lab me kyon bhej diya. Unho ne SBU had ne leke cross check ke liye third party lab me bheja tha. To uske liye vigilance firm ne complaint ki aur vigilance ne kaha ki rights ka mandate sirf firm premises me hi test karne ka hai. Third party lab me nahi bhejna chahiye. Aur ye high powered committee bani thi sir. Isme unhone railway ko kaha tha ki six month me Sample lay or third party lab me beje or a kai farm ka fail hota hai to do sal ke liye usko farm ki rok laga di din chahiye supply pe or sir jitni bhi consigni rejection hai hum pura detail analysis karte hai sir hum PU ko normally dete bhi rete hai sir or uspe jasa apne kaha tha sir I ko take up bhi karte hai sir jo bhi upheld case hota hai kafi strict action sub pe char sheet hamara aisa koi bhi case nahi hai this is a bad case or action. Nahi le rahe pe. Corrective action or preventive action. Pura detailed analysis, sir. Our past two or five years is. And this is. But on the vendor, we have corrective action. We have requested that the PU in its performance, all the rejections are taken. So on this front, sir, there is no action. Nahi ho hai. Jaise even on the basis of material, when हम राइट्स पे तो एक्शन ले रहे हैं सर अपने इंस्पेक्टर पे और एक सर जैसे ये थर्ड जब कोई लैब अप्रूव करते हैं तो इसमें आईएलसी का एक मेथड है इंटर लैब कंपैरिजन का कि एक जो जैसे हमारी राइट्स की भी जब लैब अभी एनएबीएल अप्रूव हुई थी तो वो दो सैंपल उसका अलग-अलग लैब में भेजते हैं और देखते हैं कि ये विद इन टॉलरेंस है सारे रिजल्ट तो ऐसे ही हमने आरडीएसओ से भी रिक्वेस्ट किया था और अभी हम सेम रिक्वेस्ट फिर कर रहे हैं कि जैसे ये जो थर्ड पार्टी लैब और वेंडर की जब लैब फैसिलिटी अप्रूव होती है तो एक कमेटी बने सर जो कि वेंडर की प्रमाइसेस में भी और थर्ड पार्टी में भी उसी सैंपल को लेके चेक करे और देखे कि ये रिजल्ट कंपेरेबल हैं और अगर कोई रीजंस हैं डिविएशन के तो उसको दूर करके करें सर भले ही हम लिमिट अभी जैसे 10 11 अप्रूव लैब हैं सर थर्ड पार्टी उसको कम कर दें लेकिन रिजल्ट्स कंपेरेबल होने चाहिए सर सब जगह जब हम बाहर भी भेजें सर जो अभी आपने एफआरपी मॉडुलर टॉयलेट का कहा था सर ये हमने श्रीराम टेस्ट आरसीएफ के साथ जॉइंटली चेक करके 5 दो 22 को भेजा गया था ये गवर्निंग स्पेक के हिसाब से टेस्ट करने को कहा था श्रीराम ने टॉक्सिसिटी और क्रिटिकल ऑक्सीजन इंडेक्स जो टेस्ट किया वो 16 एमएम एफआरपी वॉल पे कर दिया इस पे एफआरपी पैनल और उसका बीच में फोम और सब की बॉल पे टेस्ट किया इंस्टेड ऑफ 3 एमएम एफआरपी का और जेल कोड भी नहीं निकाला तो उससे जब श्रीराम से हमने उसने टॉक्सिसिटी 3 से ज्यादा निकाली तो स्पेक में जबकि क्लियर कट दिया हुआ है कि ये 3 एमएम पे करना है जेल कोड निकाल के तो जब श्रीराम से पूछा गया तो उसने हमसे राइटिंग में मांगा कि जेल कोड कैसे निकालना है और ये 3 एमएम का लैमिनेट कैसे लेना है हमें बताया जाए तो उसको सब एक्सप्लेन किया और अभी भी सर डेढ़ महीने हो गए हैं वो रिजल्ट नहीं दे पा रहा है हम बार बार उनसे पूछ रहे हैं इसकी अर्जेंसी है अगर आपको मैं अपना कंट्रोलिंग मैनेजर भेज देता हूँ आपको एक्सप्लेन कर देगा सब मैथड 
अगर आपको कोई डाउट है लेकिन ना तो वो हमारा आदमी को कहता है कि हमारा प्रिंसिपल है कि लैब में हम कभी नहीं एंट्री नहीं कर देते हैं और ना वो टेस्ट अभी तक कर पा रहा है तो सर मतलब श्री राम जैसी लैब में भी कंपिटेंसी का जो कि हम मानते हैं कि वो बेस्ट है एफ की पैनल के लिए सर वो मतलब उसे ये भी नहीं अभी तक प्रोसीजर ही नहीं पता है प्रॉपर टेस्ट कंडक्ट करने के टॉक्सिसिटी सजेशन ये मेरी लास्ट स्लाइड है सर सजेशन फॉर इम्प्रूवमेंट कंसाइनी का जैसा मैंने पहले रिक्वेस्ट की है कि कंसाइनी अपना रिप्रेजेंटेटिव डिप्यूट करके जो हम मैनुफैक्चर के टेस्ट कर रहे हैं उनके साथ हमारा ज्वाइंट चेक करें ताकि उनका भी कॉन्फिडेंस बने कि हम सही टेस्ट कर रहे हैं और फिर uh, uh, वो सेम uh, वो uh, वो कमेटी सेम सैंपल लेके सर थर्ड पार्टी लैब में करें और uh, उसका वेरिएशन ज्यादा नहीं होना चाहिए दोनों टेस्ट में और एक राइट्स को भी ये अभी जैसे ये कहा जाता है बैंडर प्रोमाइस में ही हमें टेस्ट करना है तो एक हम थर्ड पार्टी में राइट्स को भी अथॉरिटी को भेजने के बीच बीच में ताकि बैंडर को और टाइट किया जा सके और इसका सर इसमें मैनुअल काफी ज्यादा इसमें स्किल सेट की जरूरत है जो अभी सब ये फायर टेस्ट कर रहे हैं तो ई एन जो कि दो में सर पूरे यूरोप में सर ट्रांसपोर्ट सेक्टर में लग गया है सर रेल में बस में सब में इम्प्लीमेंट ऑलरेडी हो चुका है ये इसमें मोस्ट टेस्ट जो ये मैनुअल के बजाय ऑटोमेटिक हैं सर तो इसमें एच टेस्ट तो ऑलरेडी इम्प्लीमेंट हो गया है और सब जगह प्रॉपरली हो रही भी आ है और एच टेस्ट में ऐसे वेरिएशन के इशू भी नहीं है सर तो हमारी ये वो ऑलरेडी सर हाई लेवल कमेटी ने रिकमेंड भी किया हुआ है और हमारा भी सर हम्बल सजेशन है कि अगर इस पर ई एन फोर फाइव पे शिफ्ट कर जाए तो ये मैनुअल इंटरवेंशन और जो वेरिएशन का है ये थोड़ा सा कम होगा और अगर ये आईसी वाइज ट्रेसिबिलिटी का अगर पॉसिबल हो सके तो उससे भी सर हम और बेटर अपना जो इंटरनल एक्शन है क्योंकि अभी जब हम आई को कोई टेकअप करते हैं तो हमने हमें पास डिटेल नहीं होती कि किस आई ने कौन सी आई वाइज किया था जैसे अभी भी सर जो एन में फायर का केस हुआ तो हमें ये डिटेल तो मिली कि ये फेल हो गया है लेकिन सिर्फ वेंडर का नाम मिला सर आई का नाम हमें नहीं मिल पाया तो कई बार एक वेंडर के यहाँ कई बार एक से ज्यादा आई भी जा रहे होते हैं तो अगर आई सी वाइज डिटेल मिल पाए तो हम और करेक्टिव एक्शन बेटर तरीके से ले पाए और ये सर जब कई बार डायरेक्टली खुद से लेते हैं सैंपल तो उसमें बीच में और अधेसी होता है और बीच में कई बार वो तीन चार साल पुरानी तो इसका भी थोड़ा बहुत वेरिएशन हो सकता है जो इनपुट मटेरियल हम फ्रेश उसमें करते हैं तो इसके लिए सर ई एन फोर डबल फाइव फोर फाइव में एक टाइप टेस्ट दिया हुआ है सर आर एटीन में जिसमें कि वो पूरी सीट को जला के उसकी फायर प्रॉपर्टीज देखते हैं तो अगर इस तरह का भी सर आ, आ, अगर टॉप मैनेजमेंट चाहे कि ये इम्प्लीमेंट करना है तो इसको इस को रिव्यू कर सकता है थैंक यू वेरी मच सर फॉर गिविंग एस अपॉर्चुनिटी और हम आगे और जो जो आपने सजेशन दिए उसमें कोशिश करेंगे सर थैंक यू संदीप एनी क्वेश्चंस यू कैन टेक सम क्वेश्चंस अप टू एज अ 10 मिनट्स वेल आई हैव वन और टू ऑब्जर्वेशन टू दिस ये जो संदीप ने प्रेजेंटेशन दिया उसमें स्लाइड नंबर 14 पे दो तीन जगह पे मैंने बोला कि आप पीयूज और आरडीओस ने वेंडर्स की लैब को अप्रूव किया हुआ है देयरफॉर वी आर डूइंग इट देयर so and uh, there are also cases where there are differences in the results on one or two labs or same that so my suggestion would be the to tie it over the two loop holes that we should always test for the third party inspection on a from a nabl accredited lab only and then second part is sending the sample or collecting the sample from the vendor premises and delivering it to the lab should also be done by the rights or dpi rather than giving it to the vendor so if we are able to plug these two holes probably the results would be more uh, authentic yes, sir sir yes, i have only one comment to make sir jk jain from south central sir basically we are all talking about bad material but we have no idea what to do with the vendor when it goes wrong and that's why it will continue if we keep on debating but not a no action taken second thing i don't think we have a each and every component which we are getting at least larger ones a identification of the manufacturer and other details so basically we whatever debate we are doing 
last so many years, probably it is not going to yield any result. अवेलेबल है कंट्रोल एक्सेस से तो ये अगर और बेटर तरह से यूज हो पाए वेंडर का परफॉर्मेंस uh, रिव्यू में हमारा जो डिटेक्शन का डाटा है जो हम भी दो परसेंट से डिटेक्शन राइट्स करता है और बाकी कंसाइनिंग करते हैं तो अभी तक नॉर्मली वो उनकी वेंडर परफॉर्मेंस में ये कहीं रिफ्लेक्ट नहीं करता है You have to uh, update your lab, all the equipment, so that you can carry out all the EN specified testing. Because usually we shall be shifting to EN compliant material. The right is ready. So, तैयार है लेकिन अभी हमें अधूरा चीज़ कल में जैसे अगर हम top management को रखते हैं जैसे 10 करोड़ से ज़्यादा का सर अभी ICF में लगाई है lab. तो अराउंड करोड़ के आसपास का ये अगर हम ई एन कम्प्लाइट सारी लेटेस्ट स्टेट ऑफ फायर फायर लगाते हैं तो कुछ या तो थर्ड पार्टी जैसे ये ऑडिट पहले आरडीएसओ करता था ये अब और एक पीयू का कोई एक रिप्रेजेंटेटिव दोनों ज्वाइंट मिल के सर अगर ये ऑडिट करें और फिर हम ये मतलब लाइफ में ये मैंडेट हो भी जैसे ये सैंपल कर सकें जो आर सर उसकी कुछ हमारी लैब की बन सके तो राइट्स को टॉप मैनेजमेंट से हम रिक्वेस्ट करते सर ये फैसिलिटी तो लगवा लेंगे आई एम आस्किंग एंड राइट्स डूइंग लाल नंबर ऑफ इंस्पेक्शन एंड वेजुअली वी आर सिटिंग ओवर टू ई एन कंप्लाइन मटीरियल तो व्हाई नॉट आर राइट शुड आल्सो हैव इट्स लैब देन यू कैन कैरी आउट टू सैंपल टेस्टिंग सर वही मेरी रिक्वेस्ट है कि अभी हमें सैंपल का पावर नहीं है विड्रॉ करने की मतलब राइट right. जब हम इवन सुपर चेक में जब सैंपल लेते हैं कई सारे वेंडर राइटिंग में दे देते हैं कि भाई राइट्स या ना तो स्पैक में लिखा है कि राइट्स को देना है ना वो पेमेंट करने के लिए तैयार हैं तो अभी हमारे को मैंडेट नहीं है सर कि ये हम तो रिक्वेस्ट करते हैं कि हमें मैंडेट दिया जाए राइट्स को कि हम भी थर्ड पार्टी में इसको I am sorry, Sandeep. I am interrupting you again. Yes, the, sir. The purpose of rights doing inspection is to ensure quality. So yes, you sir. have all the mandate to ensure the quality. You can take any action to ensure the quality, even if it calls for sending the sample to a third layer. I am not. Uh, I am not uh, able to understand who restricts you to send samples to the third layer. This mandate is always available to you. You have to ensure the quality, and you have to take. Every action to take the uh, to ensure the quality. So sir, this. Sir, आप बिल्कुल सही कह रहे हैं लेकिन normally हम सब cases में हम करते हैं sample basis पे लेकिन FR के test में basically ये लिखा हुआ है कि ये जो sample third part lab में भेजने की power है ये railway या PU या RDSO को है. तो उसमें sir एक inspecting agency भी word डाल दिया जाए यदि तो ये problem sir दूर हो जाएगी. इसमें आई वुड आई वुड लाइक टू इंटरवीन आई कैन सी ए लॉट ऑफ पॉजिटिव डिस्कशन बट आई विल टेल यू व्हाट हैज बीन दी परसेप्शंस एंड सो आई एम नॉट टॉकिंग ऑफ दी परसेप्शंस ऑफ दी इंडिविजुअल्स बट परसेप्शंस ऑफ दी ऑर्गेनाइजेशंस दैट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू अंडरस्टैंड एक्ट फॉर फ्यूचर सी राइट है doing bulk of the inspection yes, for the materials of indian railways and uh, i believe it's a commercially satisfying work for rights last meeting sir somebody's mic is open kindly shut it off so rights rights is doing a job which is a technical job and they are getting paid for it and i believe it's a rewarding job that is why rights has been continuing to do it now the onus is on rights if you find 
that there is a murmur of dissatisfaction from the customers. This is somewhat what, what CRSC Northern Mr. Shailendra was telling that uh, wherever you think that uh, the uh, owners is not on rights, please come to railways and get the orders modified or improved or if you need an uh, improvement in the procedures, have you suggested? No. Rights has been comfortably cornering the proceeds of the inspection process. So this is the situation which has been which is being objected now. CRB also said so. DG Safety also said so, and I am also repeating this in the. Uh, what happens when you make your coach more fire worthy? On this, I can say the... without looking at any coach that any coach made by Indian Railways production units and a credit to ICF, RCF, and MCF, and also to Zonal Railways, it is more fire worthy than my office. It is more fire worthy than my house and all your offices and all your houses. So this is to the credit of Indian Railways and its associated agencies like rights. But the situation as it stands now is not satisfactory enough and we need a drastic improvement. So this thing, this perception of the present situation has to be understood by rights if they want to continue with the inspection business of materials of Indian Railways. If they do not understand it, they will be very soon out of it. This is an open forum and this is this is what I can see in future. So any excuse or anything that we don't have the uh, uh, we don't have the uh, saying of the board or we don't have the support of the views or the railways do not want it will not help them. So this is this in essence I would like to respond to rights is understanding of the entire situation so the improvement is definitely required in the inspection process and uh, i hope it will be discussed today and further on thank you uh, i'll throw some light on this particular issue which shalin discussed how the railways are preventing rights from taking a sample specific clause is there in the irs condition i'll be talking about it when i come to that uh, presentation so you uh, railway actually stops rights from taking a sample when they try to do it. So this is a practical situation because I have worked as head of furnishing and at RCI. So shall we tell you a clause about the railway specifically stopping right from doing its duty of taking a sample to a third party line and not responding to the rights request of actually permitting third party inspection and saying that you are not permitted. Also such uh, instances have come. who wants to speak sir this is ashok nakra ct northern railway sir ha boliye mr nakra sir, sir uh, various specs have been discussed regarding frp like MDTS of RCF and this, but regarding MME MAMU, I want uh, just I want to elaborate that for FRP of the BHL item, it, it is still old one of 82, 10192 of 82. After that, there is no improvement in FRP used in the R chute, used mm -hmm. in the motor switch group cover, used in the tap changer cover, all are of the old types. Yes, yes, yes. Maybe, sir, you, I can look at the R and uh... So, uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, am I audible? Uh, you are audible. Please speak. Uh, 
right uh, thank you sir uh, sir i think director sir is having some difficulty uh, in connecting so i would like to request uh, cfm nayar shri yagnik sir to kindly continue with his presentation sir thank you smriti i have yet to start so i will start rather than continue uh, Good yes, sir. Yes, sir. To, to continue yeah. the discussion and start with the presentation, sir. I'll sir, start please. with the presentation directly. Because some of the questions asked here have been replied, have been answered, and some new points which have evolved. Whatever experience I had as CWE furnishing uh, uh, RCF, I will like to elaborate on that. Just give me few seconds, and then I can probably. Yes, uh, I yeah. will. Uh... Here mentioned that Mr. Yagnik has been in RCF, and uh, he has been uh, in railway board earlier, and uh, he has been with rights also. So we can hear very useful information from him, Mr. Uh, Yagnik. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, very good morning. Uh, if uh, DG Safety Shri Ramdev Gupta is still there, uh, AMME Shri DC Sharma, AMPU, uh, DG Arian, and DG. Uh, and director irmi all my colleague officers dear friends ladies and gentlemen uh, i am sk yagnik and chief of faculty mechanical at nair right now and uh, i'll be taking the next presentation uh, the presentation which i propose to make is based on my experiences in dealing with the coach furnishing items when i was working as uh, cwe furnishing rcf thereafter some exposure in uh, rights in uh, further in the uh, irmi when i was taking some of the classes uh friends uh before i move to my presentation there was a uh, uh, just a discussion about the root cause investigations because i find this discussion in this seminar is specifically on the inspections but the actual discussion should have been the root cause analysis this is the list of 24 cases which i could find in the C uh, huge heap of crs committee reports uh, available at uh, nayar i took reports from 2000 till 2021 and i found that out of uh, 328 cases 24 are on fire account these are the ones which are on fire account out of these 13 cases mind you more than 50% were only on toilet fire in toilet ignited by matchstick by an unidentified person who died in the lavatory fire ignited by bd cigarette by unauthorized lady passenger so all the fires out of the majority of the fires investigated by crs since 2000 out of 328 are caused by bd cigarettes i am not talking of cases which are not reported by crs they must be much more 41 cases in uh, since 2019 is a huge number uh, so uh, compared to that the japan transport safety board website which is mandated to put investigate all cases of accidents even if there no person is died and out of 140 cases reported since 2004 there are only two cases of fire both were on account of a person putting gasoline on himself and lighting himself up in the train so we can see where we are um, probably where our discussion should be heading in future but anyway since my brief today is uh, to only focus on the areas of inspection as well as specifications i'll be now starting my presentation for the day uh, kindly uh, i would be apologizing in advance since my information and my knowledge is based on something which i did almost 7 years ago so if i am out of date or redundancies are there i hope you will be uh, uh, excusing me or something which is not known to me because rdso and the uh, psus are right now the domain knowledge experts in this so if something which is not as per the current state of affairs i'll like to be excused for that plus the suggestion which i am going to make may be something which uh, may not be they are more on the root causes uh, they are targeting so if something is not like kindly uh, excuse me for that also uh, the contents will be relevant specification there are competitive features i'll be specifically talking about the toxicity and limiting oxygen test uh, there are lot of other tests i'll also be talking about the international specifications which are used world over in various sectors then traceability of fr rating so this is a very important issue to my mind because uh, after the fire has occurred we may not know which firm supplied which item and we still keep grappling 
Uh, one is that we do not attack the root cause, how the fire was caused. Secondly, we do not even know which firm was responsible for causing uh, the propagation of fire for which we are spending so much of money in buy, buying a fire attacking material. So how we can build uh, traceability in our systems by using the latest available uh, IT tools and way forward. Some of the suggestions which come to my mind. Uh, standards are approved by uh, transport board. This is the first slide. I'll be very quickly glancing through it uh, with the information that our standards by no means are any inferior to anybody else. The aviation sector, uh, their uh, United States FAR 25 Appendix F, this has been adopted globally by you know, all the manufacturers. And there are some variations from uh, there's, I will request all the mics to be kindly switched off in case uh, there is any. You can ask the question whenever you feel like or in the chat box you can ask. Otherwise, kindly uh, uh, keep the mics off so that the presentation can go uninterrupted. So the aviation standards are based on the United States Federal Aviation uh, Regulation of Part 22 Appendix 5. All of them are highly uniform, whether there are two main streams, either it is Airbus standards which are being followed as per the AITM 3.005, 3.006 or they are uh, the Boeing standards. But the basic description of the test in both of them is similar. Methodology of testing may be slightly different, but otherwise almost similar. And uh, these are the standards used. In the marine, the main uh, uh, standard which was uh, the, the, the prescriptive uh, standard which was propagated was the FTP code in uh, by International Marine Organization in 2009, in 1996. This was update, updated in 2010. So this also has a great deal of uniformity, whether a ship is built in Mazgaon ship dock or it is built in say, uh, Kavisaka dock of Japan or Korea, almost all of them are following the similar uh, codes. As far as automotive sector is concerned, the essential um, code which drives this uh, um, uh, code for fire prevention safety is flammability of polymeric interior materials or horizontal test. This is the only test which has been prescribed by Society of Automotive Engineers in uh, 1969. It was thereafter followed by various country to country variations, but the essential theme of the test has been retained as the flammability of polymeric interior material. No other test has been prescribed, including the uh, LOI or uh, what I say, heat release rate, etc. The uh, in automotive sector is only confining itself to the single one or two tests with some variations on the values and type of test followed. So whether it is ST18 by 502 of France, DIN 75200 of Germany, GISD1201 of Japan, or ASTM D5132. All of them are talking about the flammability only. Uh, tests are similar with variations in equipment and the values. If we come to the railroad standards, the. Uh, oh, Mr. Yagnik, yeah. <coughs> this flammability is uh, what we call a resistance to spread of flame. It's flame, yeah. Same thing. It is similar. It is similar. It is what includes uh, toxicity and other things also. No, toxicity is a uh, area which has been specified by aviation sector very uh, vastly by railroad sector, but not by the automotive sector. Automotive flammability is only resistance to spread. Yeah. Okay. okay. I'm giving this comparison only to tell you that railroad specification which we follow in India are pretty good. They are by no means inferior to say Airbus or uh, Boeing. That is the only point I want to drive home or to the say, shipping sector. And that is why the small two or three slides of comparisons have been given. Later on, we'll come to the specific uh, tests which are uh, prescribed for Indian railways. What are their complications? What are their shortcomings? What are the latest improvements that we can adopt? And then we'll move on to the system improvements in the uh, short term as well as long term. This is how I have planned my presentation. So railroad standards, uh, first of them came between that developed between 1976 and 1983 USA prescriptive passenger rail safety requirements. This was the uh, Federal Railroad Administration FRA code of 49 CFR and the basic 
of this one, National Fire Protection Association uh, Rule 130. Now, this National Fire Protection Association has been there since 1890, and it has been in the mainly the building industry. There was a huge devastating fire in Chicago in 1870 or so, after which the norms for building uh, fire protections were uh, evolved in USA. But when it comes to railroad moving transport vehicles, the uh, actual first act came to the aviation industry somewhere in 1960. Then the next came the railroad. So this uh, U.S. Uh, prescription, unfortunately, uh, USA does not have too large a passenger ecosystem for railways. So this system has remained mostly confined to U.S. and Canada. However, it does contain large number of features which we can talk about. The latest development and which has been the most, I would say, uh, uh, interesting development as far as Indian railways is concerned is this. Uh, 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 TS 45545, which was uh, essentially prescribed in 2009, uh, it came into force by 2012 13 as EN 455452. And uh, the earlier to that, the European railways had all of them, although they were interconnected, Japan, the British uh, cha Channel Tunnel was going up to France and uh, further into Europe, and trains were moving crisscross across Europe. But all the countries, major countries, that is uh, Germany, France, and UK had different standards. When I say different standards, tests were similar, but the uh, some of the tests were missing. Some of the tests were uh, done in a different fashion. But uh, this uh, uh, European Union, when it was formed in late 18, uh, 1990s, it decided that our standardization on railway system has to be common. So this committee of uh, European nations was formed. And then the Electro Technical Standardization Committee, this chartered this uh, specification EN 455452. And this is of interest to us. Uh, Japan has been following a technical standard for GR Chapter 8, Section 83, 2006. And uh, the Japanese tests are mostly prescriptive. When I say prescriptive versus the performance based, there's a difference. CN 455455 is a performance based test specification. It lays down the exact values of the uh, output, say uh, HRR test. It says that the output should not be more than so and so kilowatt. But when you say prescriptive test, which is the Japanese standard, the prescriptive test mainly asks you to uh, devise a procedure, but not the exact value. So that is the difference. So Japanese technical standards have been following the EN 45545 as, the, as far as the values are concerned. But the standard which they have uh, laid down in their uh, regulatory uh, uh, framework is the Japanese technical standard for JR Chapter 8. How it is interesting, I'll come to you when I talk about the uh, slides on two slides on the root cause analysis. China, China's standards have been more aligned with the um, DIN 5510, which is a German standard earlier used by Germany. Now, after the formation of European Union, it has been shelved by Germany, but Chinese standards are allowed, aligned more with DIN 5510, and there are great number of um, discrepancies. So, the uh, basic document on which uh, I have taken the information has totally ignored the Chinese railway standards, only because it says that the Chinese railway standard, while they have taken the DIN 5510 as the uh, basis, the value they have prescribed is more aligned with the Chinese standards for the building materials. So the two have been, um, I would say, done. Uh, they have done a hybrid match between the two values from one side and the actual testing methodology from the DIN. And that is why the Chinese standards have been ignored by the researcher. In fact, whatever I'm talking about today is either based on the information taken from rights or from RCS or from one paper uh, which has been published by uh, one a lady, Brenda Prince Prime. He is a, a researcher at uh, Waterloo University of Canada, and she has uh, been doing the research in fire science for all sectors, particularly transportation. Okay, uh, that was about the standards. Now, each standard will have certain tests prescribed. So, what are the test methods that we talk about? Uh, when we talk about the, to uh, the test method, as I said, in aviation industry, in marine industry, and in transportation industry, there has been a great deal of uniform uniformity.
but when it comes to the uh, railway sector we have large number of um, differences say one is uh, us uh, standard second is um, european standard now earlier there were three or four european standards third area is the japanese prescriptive uh, code and fourth is the chinese standard and then again the indian standard ecosystem is also very large so this uh, researcher research scholar has compared the indian uh, rdso specs also in her work i'll be sharing that work if somebody is interested i can send that work to it's a 140 page document which i can send to anyone who is interested uh, the railway sector presents wide variation the differences are in mainly in flames spread and toxicity test available with different standards now, these are the two tests which we have to uh, appreciate and um, some of the tests like limiting oxygen index has been totally ignored by en45545 so where does that question of uh, some material not getting the loi correct where does it leave us the latest standard will not even talk about that particular test why we will come to that in the later slides certain set of tests are included in one standard while absent in another and those tests which are common they have been different methodologies have been used and different test values have been used from uh, one region to another so, so the, can uh, we <coughs> can we say that uh, flame spread and toxicity are the most two most important uh, parameters uh, i would like to answer your question in two different uh, fashions if you are a coach designer who is interested in attacking the root cause toxicity is of no importance to you but if you if you are a rescuer on division if you are senior dme division your prime interest is the, or your if you are senior dso or drm of a division your prime interest is that nobody should dry, die then flame spread is more important and toxicity is more important so you have to take it uh, toxicity is very important if when i am considering the rescue of the passengers after the fire has set in but if it is it is of no importance when i am discussing about the root cause so how uh, limiting oxygen index extremely important if you want to stop this uh, initiation of fire fire should not initiate i should look for loi but if fire has initiated then my passenger should not die then you look for toxicity so how you look at your design what is your prime uh, uh, i would say um, optimization parameter if your optimization parameter is ki my passenger should not die please look for toxicity if your prime indexing parameter is that flame spread means that nothing should happen once the um, uh, 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 if some fire source has come but flame should not start you should look at the flame spread and alloy uh, uh, absolutely uh, you are absolutely correct okay. but uh, as we have seen uh, many cases uh, uh, many root causes which were informed by crs inquiry committee reports they point out uh, fire started by somebody else uh, by way of some uh, bd secret uh, or some other article and it has uh, initiated slowly over a time that is not that, that, that somebody that. has um, uh, deliberately started the fire but uh, uh, so that has been pointed out so flame spread i think is not that important but toxicity once the fire is there the toxicity should not kill the passengers, I think. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, you, it is your uh, free will as a uh, designer at RCF or as a, uh, of, uh, a railway board head of production, which is the optimization parameter you want to focus on. But I'll just tell you one thing, what the uh, DG Nair said in his address, that Shinkansen in last six, uh, 58 years of existence had 13 billion riderships. 13 billion is a huge number and they had just two fire incidents both of them positively ascribed to a person who doused himself with the gasoline and set himself on fire which means that they have not at all talked about the fire retardant material because in 1964 when the um, shinkansen started there was no talk of fire retardancy subject was not at all there in the railway sector as i said this came only after 83 when first uh, prescription in the railroad came Perhaps uh, these uh, some of the countries had started taking these steps on uh, 
uh, using the upholstery of a low toxicity value and low flame spread value. But as a subject in the present form, it came only after 83. But 64 onwards, Shinkansen is running, it is ensured. And mind you, one more thing, the smoking percentage in Japan is almost double that of India. Our population, the smoking, this is a uh, very interesting uh, data from one of the uh, census uh, websites. The India has a smoking population of 12%. Japan has a smoking population of 23%. Some of the Shinkansen trays do allow smoke. They used to allow smoking up to 2020. Only 2020 complete ban on smoking in Shinkansen came. Still, there is not a single case of BD cigarettes spreading a flame in Shinkansen. Why? Because they attacked the root cause. They did not attack the fire retardancy so much as the root cause. I hope I have been able to make my point clear because it's your optimization parameter which you decide. Which one you would like to test? Okay, uh, sorry, uh, I skip. I'll not go into these details except to just to explain that how many variations exist in the railway specification. This also includes some of the uh, uh, airline specifications. In the type of test, uh, flame spread and toxicity is what I've talked about. So in flame spread, you can have um, uh, um, standard ASTM D375, uh, which is used by the US Railroad. Uh, ASTM, I'll just bring my cursor here. So, this ASTM D3675 used by the US Railroad, mainly 49 CFR is pertaining to FAR specification, that is Federal uh, Railroad uh, Authority. Uh, ASTM E162 again pertains to US Railroad. This C198914, this is an older specification, RDSO spec, because this, this is a table taken straight away from that uh, researcher's uh, uh, booklet. Uh, DIN 54831, what I mean to say is there are a large number of variations in these tests, although the test heading is same. Uh, what can be the variation? How you light the fire, whether you light it with a propane flame or with a butane flame or with a LPG flame, whether you are exposing it to the uh, further radiation through an electrical source or not exposing it to electrical source. All these details are there, we need not worry about that. What is important is, that same test can have many, many, uh, I would say, um, uh, versions of it. And in railway, these versions are too many. In aviation and uh, automotive, these are not so many. Similarly, toxicity, NCT 1409, which has been an area of concern for us. Uh, I'll be talking about more about that, but that is used by Indian Railroad. Uh, DIN EN 54391 is used by the, was used by the German, now used by the Chinese so, uh, in this. NFX uh, 1000, this was a French uh, specification, has been taken directly by the EN 45545, ASTM E262. This is an aviation, Federal Aviation Authority's uh, uh, version used in the Boeing and uh, Airbus uh, testing and ISO 56959. This is again used by the, uh, uh, by the uh, EN45545. This is used for the plastic material for smoke generation. So what I mean to say is, there are substantial number of variations. Let us not got caught into the individual variations except those which are directly concerning us. And only point I want to highlight here is that the railroad has the so many different uh, classes that uh, if you actually try to compare with the other countries, uh, we'll be confused, but we are not uh, uh, worst off as I will come in the uh, later slide as I'll explain. We are quite on the, uh, I would say better side of most of them, except that some changes can be thought of if you want to do that. Uh, okay. This is the toxicity test detail comparison. Uh, I am focusing my uh, particular attention to two tests only. Uh, this is this one, which will be, was used by the French railways, now taken up by uh, the uh, EN, uh, CEN. Uh, this CEN is also ISO 5659 for CEN. This is a plastic smoke generation and fire test for uh, the upholstery will be more focused around this one. Uh, when you come to the uh, 
airbus industry and uh, the uh, uh, boeing industry they are using two different standards abd 3031 7.4 is used for uh, mainly uh, i would say uh, the the uh, uh, airbus industry and bss 7239 is used by the uh, boeing uh, please don't worry too much about that and we are going to stick ourselves to essentially very basic uh, features of the two toxicity tests which we are going to compare. So I'm just running through this slide. I've taken the slide from uh, the rights uh, officers and what they had described in their previous presentation. These different specifications are used in our uh, testings, UIC 564-2, Appendix 10, Appendix 11, 564, Appendix 4, different materials will need different type of testing. For example, FRP panel, which is used on the end walls and side walls, uh, its relative exposure and uh, flammability is relatively uh, at a higher uh, exposure level. So it will need more inputs in terms of, uh, uh, say, pilot frame. So then we will use a different specification. Whereas for a upholstery and fusion uh, material like uh, DTDP or PO foam or uh, silicon foam, relatively at a lower exposure, we are able to start the fire. So these are the differences which have been used. We use the PVC flooring for a different standard. We, for Comprec, we use a different standard. For um, the spread of flame, essential test is same, but the degree to which we try to expose the material to flame is what is going to matter. Somebody can correct me from uh, RDSO or RICE or RCA if uh, I'm wrong on this. Because as I said, my knowledge is based on something which I did about seven years ago. Toxicity, there are two main tests which are going to uh, bother us, NCD 1409 and ISO 56592. I'll be discussing about uh, the details in the, uh, about two or three slides which are coming up. Deterioration to visibility of smoke, UIC 5642, appendix 15 is used. Limiting oxygen index, uh, again is a test if you want to attack the root cause. It's an important test. Uh, two or three standards are used. IS 133606, ASTM D2863. Uh, uh, the other two are also in vogue for some of the minor items. Heat release rate has been introduced in the CEN standards recently. And uh, smoke density, again, is a test which has been introduced in uh, EN45545. So uh, these various tests are there. They are used for different materials def depending on their composition, depending on their, uh, I would say, amenability to flame or amenability to fire resistance. And uh, there are minor differences in them, except two tests. Uh, toxicity has some fundamental differences between the two types. NCD and ISO, and uh, LOI does not have too much of difference, but some of the specifications totally miss out LOI. Now, this is something which we have to discuss why it is so happening. Uh, before I move to the FR particular issues, uh, there was some very interesting point made by CET Northern. Uh, I don't know whether he's still present or he has left the meeting. In co I have not uh, oh, studied. Can I again interfere, uh, Mr. Yagnik? Yeah. So when we have discussed, please show the last slide. Previous slide. Uh, previous slide. Previous slide. Yes, if you see these various characteristics of the material, fire retardant materials, it becomes very clear that the manufacturer will have to add some additives, extra material to achieve these properties. Okay. Yes. Compared to the normal commercial material available, the manufacturer will have to add certain chemicals, additives to achieve these properties. So I think we can also try to get the information on what are the additives, what are their costs. And because uh, a commercial firm will try to avoid adding these additives to reduce his cost. So I think uh, we can go into that area also to know what are the additives and what are their costs okay thank you yes. what you have uh, mentioned is that the this is a theory in lean management says getting it right first time 
there's a very famous saying by the uh, vice president of um, toyota manufacturing uh, toyota industries mr taichi ono he was the vice president around 1960 1970 and he is considered to be the management guru for lean uh, management on various uh, uh, theories were evolved during his time he says that the best inspection is no inspection mind you the best inspection is no inspection because if you uh, the person who is doing the job first time knows what he is doing and if he gets the item right first time yanik sahab ra sahab main ek minute interrupt karunga aapko ji all the uh, all the, all our uh, colleagues who are present in this session देखो भैया एक चीज मैं ये बोलना चाहता हूँ कि मैं चार साल आई वॉज द इंडियन रेलवे इंस्पेक्टिंग ऑफिसर इन लंडन फॉर फोर इयर्स और मैंने जर्मनी में यूके में और भी जगहों पे रोमानिया भी गया था वेरियस प्लेसेस तो मैंने इंस्पेक्शन किया एंड वॉट आई विल ओनली अटैच टू वॉट याग्निक साहब इज सेम ये जो पुलिस बाजी है दिस इज इससे कोई क्वालिटी आती नहीं है बट आई थिंक हमारी भी मजबूरी है बिकॉज हमारा सिचुएशन फर्क हैं और मे बी वेंडर्स की इंटेग्रिटी नहीं है तो हम वी कीप ऑन चेकिंग लेकिन ये कोई बहुत रोबस तरीका नहीं है टू इंश्योर क्वालिटी जहाँ क्वालिटी अचीव हुई है ऑन अ लास्टिंग बेसिस वहाँ अलग चीज़ों से अचीव हुई है आई थिंक यागनिक साहब इज़ वेल अवेयर ऑफ दैट बट ठीक है वी हैव टू कैरी ऑन एंड डू वट एवर बेस्ट इन इन आवर सिस्टम बिकॉज ये पुलिस बाजी से बहुत ज़्यादा हेडवे मतलब भी मतलब उस तरह की क्वालिटी आने लग जाए मुझे उम्मीद आफ्टर हैविंग डन अ लॉन्ग इनिंग्स आई हैव लेस होप बट यस इन आवर सिस्टम वी हैव टू कीप डूइंग इट बिकॉज देयर नो अदर गो अदर अदर नॉट टू डू इट क्योंकि अभी जैसे बात सामने आई कि कोई उसकी जो रिक्वायर्ड एट्रीब्यूट है मटेरियल की वो सर्टन एडिटिव डालने पर अचीव होती है वो एडिटिव महंगा होगा तो वो कट करेगा कॉलर तो वो है नहीं करना है so you have said what i wanted to say and uh, i have nothing more to add now uh, but uh, i can tell you only from my experience ki main kai jagah pe uh, jata tha and sandeep jain and other rights officers will confirm that same firm under the same roof is manufacturing item for auto industry and those cars are exported to europe maruti ke liye bana raha hai aur wahi aadmi railway ke liye bana raha hai usi line mein wahi manager wahi management wahi aadmi aapko jo quality de raha hai wo alag de raha hai और उनको दे रहा है वो वर्ल्ड क्लास दे रहा है क्यों दे रहा है वी विल नॉट टॉक अबाउट दिस दिस बियॉन्ड द स्कोप ऑफ दिस वर्कशॉप ऑफ कोर्स वी कैन डू लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स बट कैसे करनी है मैं इस बारे में यहाँ पे बात नहीं करना चाहूंगा जी सर आई विल ओनली मैं क्वालिटी वी मस्ट रिमेम्बर इज नॉट ए टेक्निकल पैरामीटर Yes. So a lot of people will disagree with me on this, perhaps, but quality is a contracted parameter. What we must understand is that quality does not come because you write beautiful English on a piece of paper, or you establish a great lab in one corner of the country. These things don't give the quality. Quality comes depending on how firm is your contract and how it is formed. So if it's a contractual situation where somebody is getting money for supplying you goods which can be made cheaper by making compromises so it is likely that sooner than later people will make a compromise and supply you cheaper products unless in your contract which includes the technical specification you have pinpointed items which are to be checked compulsorily by checking which instead of falling in the deep standards that you have but for the inspection inspecting to standards is not enough yes i believe that you must have in addition to inspecting to standards you should have a critical parameters which are to be checked to make sure that you are get, getting apple to apple yes so if the flame propagation is increasing and people are not adding the retarding element or if the smoke is coming black and people are not adding the additives to make the smoke whiter and transparent and if the oxygen limiting index is becoming too low so it is burning literally without oxygen because you are not adding um, index raising 
in chemicals, which are expensive. I checked one or two chemicals. They were 44,000 rupees a kg. So why will they add even if it's a small quantity? So point is that we must understand that beyond technicalities, quality is a contracted parameter. And in our contract, we must work as a group for identifying for each particular parameter of a specification. What is it that we must check? I give you an example. During COVID times, people found there was a parameter to wait temperature check. You see, what was it? Was it a COVID test? Was it RT-PCR? No, it was a distinguishing feature. The person will normally have elevated temperature. So you check that. That gave you a degree of screening and made your life livable. Similarly, we must find for our specifications. You see, discussion about specification, adoption of new standards is one side, which is essential technical parameter for fixing the manufacturing processes, fixing the internal manufacturing checks and inspection procedures. But ultimately, during acceptance testing, when you come to a purchase situation, it's a contract situation. In purchase situation, we must make lay down critical parameters against each, which can be checked indelibly. So that whenever you check, maybe in every situation, you cannot find such a parameter, but I am of firm faith, being a mechanical engineer myself, that it is possible that if we try hard, we can identify these critical parameters against most of the critical requirements of a specification. So if we are able to do that, our people will not do it. Now, second aspect comes, as I said, contractual. What is the cost of breaching the contract? Our contracts are pretty much loose and you cannot enforce on the basis of goodwill. You cannot enforce primarily on the basis of policing. In Europe, there is a 20 years liability clause. In railways, 20 years liability clause. If there is a, some, there's something which has failed on account of manufacturing defect, so our item supplied today, which does not have proper composition, detected 17 or ideally speaking 19.9 years later, will be the manufacturer will be fully liable for losses. So we have to work as railways, all of us are included in it, towards building certain certain enforceable mechanism for liability. At the moment, liability is of unknown passenger smoking a BD in a cigarette, in a toilet. So that, uh, that is an aspect which we need to watch. Thank you. Thank you, you have rightly said because the um, a degree to which we can bind the contact and not only bind contact ourselves also to the contact and build that degree of trust between the two is the key to how good the material will get. As I get, tell you, told you the example, same firm giving the material for export market to Maruti, same firm giving third class material to railways for our consumption. Uh, there are two specifications in cable, uh, XLP insulated PVC sheet cable up to 1100 uh, volts uh, as per IS 7098 part 1, 1988, uh, category 01, C1 and C2. This FR is fire retardant, FR LSH is fire retardant, low uh, smoke and uh, halogen test. Now this uh, low smoke and halogen test, uh, uh, is uh, FR is for C1 category, FR LSH is for C2 category. These are the, uh, the tests which are included, oxygen index test, flame retardant and halogen acid test. Now uh, these tests are mostly type test, but I believe that this cable is not being used in LHB coach, what we use in LHB coach now is the thin wall flexible elastomeric conductor for 750 oblique uh, 3 kV for use in locomotive EMU coaches, etc. The specification particularly is ELRS, uh, uh, ELRS oblique spec oblique ELC oblique 019 revision 4. Uh, no FR test has been specified in acceptance test stage, although two test of toxicity and smoke density are done as a type test. Now, why this is important? The cable which we get uh, in a non-AC coach, almost 358 kgs of cable is used, out of which 80 kilo is insulation material. It's a very important figure that out of uh, 
non ac coach i am talking about 350 kg of uh, cable, uh, cable is used in the harness out of which uh, you have a 58 kg is uh, sorry 80 79 kg is your insulation material so your almost the amount of insulation which you have is uh, nearly 22% here and in a ac coach this increases further in a ac coach you have roughly a 750 to 760 kg of uh, uh, total cable out of which 200 kg because the cable is thicker as your um, uh, voltage and current carrying capacity increases the size of cable increases so nearly 200 kg this figure might be off by a few kilos in the non ac coach i could get the figure from rcf here i have not been able to get the figure uh, 200 kg is the insulation material and if i calculate the insulation material impact only then it becomes almost equal to the uh, material which is used in the uh, pvc flooring which is less than 200 and uh, the curtains which are certainly less than 200 in a coach uh, the second important reason why cable is important is that cable apart from a passive uh, toxic source of smoke is also active source it has a heat uh, source within it because whenever current is passing it is a heat source and if the performance of the cable deteriorates or if there is a fault in the electrical system uh, this is the most immediate material in the vicinity of the um, this insulation material is the most uh, close to that uh, heat generation so even if the heat generation is not very high the impact on this particular insulation can be pretty large and lastly because the um, uh, cables are lying not in the uh, so much in the lower deck as in the upper decks of the coaches maybe waist level and above so the impact of radiation coming out of any fire in the coach is more impinging on the cables so there suppose the fire has been started due to some other cause but the impact on the cable insulation in an enclosed area where sufficient oxygen is not available is going to be much more the toxic uh, gas generation impact can be almost equal to it is not as high as the uh, pu foam or cushion cushioning material because that is the most uh, uh, biggest uh, uh, cause of toxicity but otherwise the cable is pretty important if the toxicity uh, gases are to be considered lot of gases are given by the cable insulation in case of fire uh, sorry i went to the so uh, what we do here the limiting oxygen index test in the uh, specification a is used as per this uh, is uh, 1080 i don't want to go into this test but what is important is that these tests are only type test in case a and b and they are not the uh, uh, acceptance test as is the case with other fire retardant material whereas their contribution to toxic gases can be almost as high as some of the lower end uh, fr material this point has to be considered now it but yagnik sahab bach ji ye bol raha hu ki agar koi टेस्ट बेशक टाइप टेस्ट है लेकिन अगर उसकी टेस्टिंग की फैसिलिटी फर्म क्या है उसकी मैन्युफैक्चरिंग प्रेमाइसिस में तो स्पेसिफिकेशन जो बनता है जो चाहे पीयू बनाए चाहे आरडीएसओ बनाए उसमें ये तो कर ही सकते हैं ना कि अ सर्टेन पैरामीटर विच टिपिकली इज अ टाइप टेस्ट एंड इफ फैसिलिटीज अवेलेबल इन द लैब इट कैन बी डन उसके प्रेमाइसिस में कैलिब्रेटेड फैसिलिटी अगर है वो तो एवरी मे बी थ्री इंस्पेक्शन रैंडमली कभी कर, कर लिया जाए इसको एक अपना एक टेस्ट प्रोटोकॉल बना के स्पेक का पार्ट बनाया जाए एक तो एक चीज में एक तो एक चीज में ये बोलना चाह रहा था कि जनरली क्या होता है कि ये जो स्पेक्स होते हैं ना देर लिविड टू द इंस्पेक्टर टू डिसाइफर क्या क्या चेक करना है ठीक है ना और फिर वो जाता है उसके पास समय कम रहता है वो एक दिन में सब करना होता है फर्म भी एक दिन बजट की होती है और जो करना गया उसको वो भी एक दिन बजट किया तो उसका अगर एक तो स्पेसिफिकेशन शुड हैव इन बिल्ड टेस्ट प्रोटोकॉल फॉर एक्सेप्टेंस टेस्टिंग इन विच टेस्ट शुड बी वेरी मैकेनिकल लिस्टेड और वन टू थ्री फोर लाइक दैट उसमें एक चीज ये कर सकते हैं कि जो टेस्ट टाइप टेस्ट है लेकिन फर्म के यहाँ फैसिलिटी है हो सकता है वो एवरी थ्री इंस्पेक्शन का भी रेंडमली कर लें तो पकड़ में आ सकती चीज अगर वो है बट इफ इट मीन्स गोइंग टू आउटसाइड लैब तब उसके रिजर्वेशन होंगे उसके 
Thanks, sir. I'll club your observation with the observation of CRST Northern Region, uh, sorry, Northern Railway, who said that who stops rights from checking. So, uh, Shalind, also I am answering that question at this stage. That the sir, can I intervene one second, sir? Huh? Sir, we are talking all these things is right, but as DG Safety has said, what is the mechanism if he fails? What is the prevention that vendor will not indulge in same practice again? Uh, these are ethical issues. I would not like to enter into these. No, sir, no, no. Sir, it is not so difficult, bhi hai, sir. Ki we, though it is not a seminar to discuss, but I am failed to understand why you can't have a three or four year contracts even. We will come to that. Uh, kindly permit me to finish the uh, this particular thing. I do have answers on the ethical issues also. It, it is not that India is bad. India may have world class Mercedes Benz ke export karte components. Hamari Chennai may see forms, like in there is something in the Sarkari system or railway system that we have to correct, and nobody else will correct. Planning Commission and ETI of Nikarega after Mirkui Karna. So I'll come to that, those, those suggestions when I finish the. Uh, hey, we all know, Ham Sapo Patayavo, L1 system. We'll come to that because I want to quickly finish it. There's a very interesting uh, presentation coming from Mr. Shalesh also. So I'll finish this in another 10 minutes and uh, try to answer the question. Then at the end of the uh, session, we'll enter into these ethical issues that how they can be addressed. I do have replies to some of your questions. I don't have replied to every, of, uh, every question of yours. Okay, electrical protective devices and electrical are extremely important, but what I could check, uh, see in as CWE furnishing RCA that we were not checking these uh, parameters. The when a new uh, switch, uh, uh, switchboard cabinet has come from a farm, I did not know what is the tripping time, even random check which we used to do in the quality audit on the shop floor. I don't think we were doing these checks on the um, electrical item because we did not have facility. Like uh, 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 rights can confirm whether they are checking these parameters or not. As for the IS3043, the fall detection, if it is detected in time, can stop a lot of electrical fires. I don't say every fire is electrical, but if it is an electrical fault, and if you can disconnect the supply within 35 milliseconds wet condition, 150 milliseconds dry condition, 2 milliseconds in two short circuit tripping, perhaps you can control a lot of fires. This is a report which has been uh, taken from a boom, uh, Mumbai uh, fire brigade, the uh, BMC report is there. But uh, whether these uh, items are correctly working, uh, at least in RCF, I could not check at any stage. Uh, you can consider whether some of the uh, switchboard cabinets can be subjected to this test or not. With the age, some of the parameters can deteriorate. And I say that with age, because the normal life of circuit breakers can be as high as 25 years to 30 years. Circuit breakers, they claim if there is nothing wrong, they will function right up to the end of the coach life. But with age, are we validating in every POS that is something, this uh, order of the 35 millisecond or 150 millisecond, some electrical officer can confirm at the end of the uh, presentation whether we are doing these checks or not. And lastly, this point is very important, which I have taken from the uh, Japanese uh, code of uh, uh, chapter 5 of uh, Japanese uh, Fire Prevention Precaution Safety Board is that they provide extreme flame retardant protective covering on all electrical elements. Now, this flame retardant covering, which to my mind is the primary reason why, why Shinkansen, despite a very adverse condition of smoking, has been able to uh, go at a zero rate of fire is that every electrical item is covered with a good protective extreme flame retardant protective cover. We do have this or not, I don't know. At least in RCF, seven years ago when I was there, I was in the manufacturing, I could not see any. I used to see that switchboard cabinets and HRC fuses and all the uh, equipment, uh, even the cable tray at the bottom. Initially, it used to be very good, but after one POH, it used to go quite bad and the cable used to become loose. I don't know uh, whether we are doing any checks or not. This can be. Uh, this is being brought to your uh, knowledge because if they are being done, you can correct me. If they are not being done, you can uh, think of, say, including them. Now, we had said that we are going to discuss specifically about the toxicity test and the LOI because I had promised in my uh, initial part of the lecture that this is the test which is difficult and there are a lot of variations. Now, toxicity test is uh, different test methods generate different gaseous outputs. Now, as you know, if I expose a material to fire, 
in the initial stages it may behave in a different manner if the supply of air is abundantly good it may give a different kind of smoke uh, 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 and toxicity values compared to a situation where the uh, uh, the supply of air is not there so ventilation is very important number 2 is the uh, co components own composition number 3 is the initial flame uh, uh, flux to which i had exposed the material suppose i had exposed the material to say 25 kilowatt per uh, meter square uh, flux the behavior will be quite different compared to a flame which is of a 50 kilowatt flux so what i mean to say is that toxicity test with different levels is extremely difficult to compare every fire goes through the phase of pre ignition decomposition vaporization initiation fire growth steady state burning and decay at each stage you will get different levels of gases so how you are measuring which test you are adopting and which specification you are adopting will decide same material which may pass in one type of test may fail in another and as i come to the ncd 1409 test which is being followed by uh, us in majority of the cases even the same test on same material in same day can give different result i'll come to that uh, timing and duration of sampling is important as at each stage nature and amount of combustion products is different plane temperature reached is result is going to impact the air availability plus the amount of material burning so how much plane temperature is going will again depend on the ventilation condition and if flame temperature and this in turn that means flame temperature in turn will again impact the toxicity level of the gases which are emitted so they are so closely related in a loop that uh, as i said if i have a high ventilation my temperature goes high and if i my temperature goes high my toxicity levels may be different than a condition when my ventilation was poor and uh, my te flame temperature did not go so high and so i got a different uh, toxicity level so this complexity has to be appreciated when we are comparing the uh, test and then uh, if we can do that perhaps we can think of uh, uh, adopting the right uh, standard which can give us the correct condition or we can think of a hybrid of test as i said lot of cases are there in rdso where we have adopted hybrid uh, test so ye bhi ho sakta hai ki ek test mein isme karu ek test usi uh, component ka dusra test mein kahin aur karu uh, threshold levels of toxic product ss are on the basis of l50 value uh, i'll come to this uh, part later on uh, l50 and idlh these are the two terms which are used very commonly in the toxicity testing l50 is the condition which is when the gas level is such that 50% of the population will die within 30 minutes if suppose the phosgene level in atmosphere is say 50 ppm and i say that l50 value of phosgene is say 25 that means 25 ppm will ensure that if the population is exposed for 30 minutes at least half of them will die and second term used in toxicity testing is idlh immediately dangerous to life and health why these two terms are important because they decide the different threshold levels in different standards one standard is adopting l50 that is uh, 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 ncd 1405 our convention standard second standard is adopting idlh and idlh is being adopted by uh, en 45545 here the idlh means immediately dangerous to life and health immediately dangerous to life and health means that person may not die but there will be a long term impact on his lungs or on his body uh, mechanism or on his metabolism which will be of long term duration he may even get cancer so uh, the two levels idlh and l50 the threshold levels are quite different and different standards are using different kind of uh, 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 values I, either they are using l50 or they are using idlh and that is why the threshold levels also in the two tests are coming out to be different uh this is another important part uh, you uh, we have to understand so that we can really appreciate apple to apple comparison is possible the volume of test sample uh, we are conducting our test mostly on a small scale uh, that is either 100 gram in ncd or 75 by 75 by 25 in uh, case uh, mm uh, sample in case of en245525 now this small scale test do not mirror the full combustion condition 
not that they are to be discarded for this reason, but we have only have to appreciate that the, the, the authorities, the regulators have prescribed the large scale test also. So when I'm prescribing EN45545, I should also take it in a complete, uh, I would say, uh, manner rather than only taking the small scale test only for consideration. So small scale tests do not monitor the full con combustion conditions. In full scale fire, the high heat fluxes generated can be of sufficient for burning to continue even at low oxygen level. So as I said, if LOI is say 35% for your material, but heat flux has re uh, reached a very high level. Suppose it's a pyrolytic condition where the temperatures have reached say 1000 degrees. Now even at 5% of the oxygen, you will get the burning. This is important to understand. That is why I said the initiation of fire is there, then LOI is important. But once fire has started, LOI loses its importance. Hence, Any LOI questions? loses less significance under question once initiation of okay. yes. Sorry? Yeah. The low oxygen index. So keeping oxygen index. The budget is coming Now Boeing and Airbus specify large scale flammability test on seats to simulate realistic condition and EN 45545 also has provision of full, full seat birth fire test for rail application. I have a video with me, but I am not going to show that to you so that I can finish this particular lecture in time. Now I come to the threshold levels used in the two tests. <coughs> this is a very important slide. Please note that in NCD 1409, which is being currently used by us in all cases except the PO form, uh, PO form the coating gases are measured through the colometric tube. The level threshold level where the um, toxicity will be declared as out of control. Okay. But the IDLH, your EN 455 is the condition, right? There are some members whose uh, microphone is on. I request you to please switch it on or the administrator can do it. It's please. Admin at ERMI can uh, switch off the yes, mic. Sir. Yeah, please. Yes, sir. Please. Yes, sir. I've done. Please continue. So suppose carbon monoxide is 4000 threshold is considered okay in um, NCD, here it is 1380 only. The reason is what I explained in the previous slide. IDLH is lower value and the uh, LC50 is a higher value. So here they are using the LC50 method, here they are using the um, uh, IDLH uh, uh, mode of uh, determining the threshold level. Number four, all the gases which have been described in red, these are not measured in the uh, new standard which is EN45545. <coughs> now why they are not measured? If suppose your raw material is such that it is animating these gases and, uh, and Rites can perhaps confirm with me uh, whether these gases are found during their inspection or not. If hydrogen sulfide is being found by rights and if ammonia is being found and if nitrile is being found, then we cannot at all think of adopting this standard. So rights will have to give its feedback to RDS and others if these yes. gases are found. But if they are not found, then it is quite safe to adopt this standard. So if you are... Your... Generally, these six gases are not there during the toxicity testing. Thank you. But uh, uh, although NCD is more stringent as far as the number of gases is concerned, but it is more liberal as far as the threshold value is concerned. So these two points I have. I think I have a question. Uh, can I take it at the end so that I can finish okay. it? Okay. In, uh, another five minutes and then we can take any number of questions and we can permit the, uh, I'll, I'm sorry, I'll finish because I've taken some more time. So I'll finish it in the uh, end. Okay. So in burns with, fly, uh, with pilot flame, specimen weight is 100 gram. And what you saw, see on the left hand is the NCD uh, specification and temperature attained is 1100 degrees with complete burning. So complete burning is uh, taking place of the NCD, whereas in the toxicity index permitted is less than one. This is the summation of all gases. So when I say one, it means all gases which have been measured which are toxic, their summation level should not be more than one. Now coming to the EN 45545, the radiant heat flux of 50 kilowatt without pilot flame or 25 kilowatt with pilot flame, model 3 and 2. Model 3 is basically for the uh, uh, PO foam, model 2 is for the small rubber components. 
uh, area it is area based test against weight based test in ncd here we are basically not looking at the weight but the area of the specimen and uh, gas is analyzed after 4 minutes whereas in the case of uh, ncd we were analyzing the gas after complete burn down so there is a difference you will have to note that and different levels of indexes as per the hazard level are measured don't bother about them hazard level one is used is the lowest toxicity level is there the worst uh, quality material which means that if the it is a short journey train only day train i can use it but if it is a night sleeper coach going into the tunnel i have to use hazard level three uh, qualitative comparison here the two comes up measurement the only and biggest uh, hesitation against using ncd is that it is highly subjective the measurement method is colometric tubes these tubes and pumps actually after the burning has taken place in the chamber a uh, pump is used to draw the gases as sandeep also had shown in his uh, presentation and these pumps can be made to purposely leak it is not that the leak through pumps are not available but the supplier will purposely use a pump which leaks so that more air from the atmosphere mixes with the gases and when I put them into the colometric tube, my values are less. So this is the biggest problem with the uh, with the uh, NCD 14059. Against that, uh, in 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 EN 45545, we are using FTIR for Fourier transform infrared spectrometer. Now this is a very reliable equipment compared to the uh, colometric tubes, and that is one biggest reason you have to consider when you are trying to move from one channel to another. Other things could have been compared because there are different conditions are uh, generated, but this is one very major uh, drawback. Uh, higher threshold levels for toxic gases are there in NCT. As I said, this is using the LC50 where the uh, toxic levels are, are uh, higher and complete combustion is taking place in the excess air. So it does not give you the simulation of the low uh, value, low ventilation gases. Against that, EN455 also has some drawbacks. Less number of gases are analyzed, 8 versus 14. Gas emission based on radiant, radiant flux. Uh, here it was a pilot frame, here it is a radiant flux. Complete combustion conditions not simulated. And capturing the phase in relatively early phase of combustion. So, when fire starts, the early phase of combustion is gas. When we have completed the complete combustion, we have completed the NCD. Uh, benchmarking with it. Uh, I just to tell you that if we compare with aviation so we are not very badly off. Uh, aviation standard, uh, give, just giving summary, is using only six gases, not even eight. Uh, um, in NCD, you are using, uh, you are checking 16, uh, 14 gases. In uh, EN45545, you are... Yeah, following EN45545, no? Yeah, 45545. Railways will mostly follow CN. So aviation se hum log kam, uh, aviation wale aur kam check karte hai. Threshold level for most gases are more liberal in aviation. Aviation mein jahan pe aapne 1380 aapne EN uh, 45545 mein CO, CO ka threshold dekha tha. Yahaan pe ye 3000 hai. So wo kaafi liberal hai gas ki toxicity ko bear jyada kar rahe hai. Probably they are using LC50 standards. But the only good point there is that they do the testing on full seat for flammability as per the advice. This is again done at periodic levels. So once in a year or twice in a year, but they do the testing on full seat to get the simulation in the real case fires, not on the small sample, which we do in our case. Even EN has a provision for full scale testing, which we have so far not adopted. If I am wrong, kindly correct me. Okay, this is that uh, full scale testing. See, full seat is burnt and then it is subject to. Now, this is the last test which I am going to discuss, limiting oxygen test. It is an important test to determine the property before the initiation of fire. Higher the index, more retardant the material. But as I said, once the fire has started, these values drop very drastically. So once the fire starts, the oxygen requirement goes down. The standards used are shown here. Don't worry too much. The methods of testing are almost similar, except the size of the flame whether the flame should be put, put on the top of the sample or at the bottom of the sample, those kind of differences are there. And interestingly, this has not been specified for PU foam. Uh, this uh, uh, PU foam, which has been recently um, 
I would say put into use by Indian Railways. Here, this important test has been eliminated. Uh, why it has been eliminated? Because you form specifies HRR test to be done instead of that. HRR they believe is also checking indirectly the oxygen uh, limiting oxygen level. But uh, this has to be, uh, I would say, investigated in more detail whether can we can separately uh, specify LOI or not for PU form or not. Although otherwise all tests are as per EN45545, but can we in, uh, include an additional test of LOI? Well, the um, designer has to decide. Uh, way forward, toxicity test, you can switch over to EN45545 because of the reliability of measurement. That is the single most important reason why it is important. And But you have to make sure that additional gases are not there, which are missing in EN45545 detection. So Sandeep said that other eight gases are not coming, so you can safely move to that. Uh, given the quality, quantity of cable insulation and material used in coaches, almost 300 kg, toxicity test for cables should also be found part of the acceptance test. If at all you are doing it for the, um, for the, for the uh, other HR material, then why not cable also? Think of that. And uh, finally, uh, identify or even encourage a lay, robust lab infrastructure in joint effort with TSU, private labs, or set up an in-house lab. We can join with, hands with the CPRA Bangalore, and we can set up a railway-specific uh, lab, or we can request rights to set up a specific lab, but as rights set correctly, you have to permit them to draw the sample. Right now, your IES uh, conditions of contract Specifically, IS 1409 does not permit you to take a sample if he has an in house laboratory. So, uh, Shalin, kindly read that uh, clause. If that clause, whenever the right strikes to take a sample, the supplier always says that you have violation of IS 1409. So, you have to stop it. correct the clause, so you have to problem that the right sample is not going to be able to problem solve it. Long term measures create a body of knowledge for IR. Sabi bade uh, federal uh, governments ke paas ek body of knowledge hai. Kya Indian Railways being such a large, uh, uh, I would say, user of FR material, can we create a body of knowledge which can consist of laboratory setup, RDSO, PUs, uh, some of the educational institutions like IITs, uh, something like uh, Nair can be a coordinator for that. And we can even take people from, say, outside who are the experts. Right? If uh, this will capture your institutional uh, knowledge, so far we are depending on one of the bodies which are mostly uh, not, I would say, in sync with each other. But this body of knowledge can meet once in, say, six months, discuss the papers, can, can uh, also encourage the research papers to be submitted. Say, we have a National Rail Transport Institute. So if this body of knowledge says that, okay, I'll get you a PhD done from NRTI, then this can be a very good uh, uh, forum for research, independent research out of, outside the railway. Whatever be the stretch, switch to process control charting with product inspection as subsidiary check. As I said, and as DG Nair also said, the checks, inspection, product inspection checks are always faulty. Switch to process control check, and this can be done by rights also, this can be done by you also, by a third party inspection. Please check what is he is uh, doing in the process. And it is quite easy today with IoT and with the uh, industry 4.0, I can get the reading directly from, a, from his equipment to know whether he reached the required temperature while making that resin or not, or whether he mixed the right quantity of the uh, material, uh, the, the, the ingredient in the making the uh, few foam or not. So we can directly get the data from a factory which is in Chennai while sitting in Delhi without any problem. So switch to process control, you will find the difference. And this is how the Maruti has been able to eliminate their product inspections and they have switched to the process inspection. Okay, rights can set up a state of art lab with safety oversight by railways. Railways can be the, uh, I would say, uh, prime agent for oversight and rights can be requested. Of course, you will have to permit rights to draw the sample on table basis. First of root cause analysis, as I said, we should not only focus on the fire retardant material, but active cases which are causing the fire. And then only we'll be able to reach the stage where we can prevent the fire. 
provide extreme plane retardant protective covering. As I said, in Japanese uh, railway standard, this was the only useful part which I found. All the electricals are covered with a, something like a protective shield on a challenger spaceship. When the spaceship enters your uh, earthing area, the temperature goes beyond 1400 degrees, but it protects the spaceship. Similarly, electrical systems which are active source can be protected by, in this panel, this is what the Japanese railways in Shinkansen have done. And finally, use external auditors for maintenance. As CRB rightly said, maintenance depot mein kis device ko aapne pass kiya hai, kis device ko aap nahi chalne de rahe hai, kaun sa protected device kik kaam kar raha hai, aapka fire retardant system work kar raha hai ki nahi, wo koi, aap agar nahi pata sakte hai, to koi external auditor ki madat li jiye, it can be rights, it can be some other third party inspection body, but they can be permitted to go into the inspection region, into the maintenance systems and check your uh, system whether they are working on. These are some of the short term uh, measures. I am not uh, talking about that. Build traceability, uh, which component goes into the which coach. Aapko ye bata hon, jaisi coach pehle POS mein jata hai, 50% seats and bus jo sabse bada cause of concern hai, wo badal jata hai. So I don't know record, PAU mein to maintain hota hai ki kaun si seat kis coach mein gai hai. Lien jaisi wo POS depo mein gaya, POS workshop mein, agar mali jo wo seat um, RK form ki thi, so, पता लगा कि हमारे रिकॉर्ड में आरके फॉर्म आ रहा है कोच नंबर 1 2 3 4 लेकिन एक्चुअली वो सीट पीओएच के पर लग गई किसी और गाड़ी में तो ये ट्रेसेबिलिटी हम कैसे मेंटेन करेंगे इट इज पॉसिबल आरएफआईडी टैग अगर आप लगा दे तो जो भी सीट जहां भी जाएगी आप उसको मेजर कर सकते हैं वाइज में आप मॉड्यूल बना सकते हैं लेकिन कंपनी हैज टू डिसाइड ऑन ईच पीओएच और मेजर चेंज व्हिच कंपोनेंट गोइंग टू व्हिच कोच आई डोंट नो वेदर वी आर मेंटेनिंग दैट और नॉट when fire sensitive material like poor or exhibits change, are there any records? Kai ba birth de hum log material change karte hain POH ke. Uska record hume pata nahi maintain kar rahe hain ki kar rahe hain. In case of fire, is it possible to establish traceability? Agar kisi coach mein aag lag gayi, kya main pakad paunga ki kis firm ka material tha jo ekdam jal ke khaak ho gaya? Aaj ki date mein shayad nahi kar paaya. And develop a uniform code and link in the wise so RFID tag. Har ek seat pe हर एक कंपोनेंट हर एक स्विच बोर्ड कैबिनेट के ऊपर अगर आप आरएफआईडी टैग से उसकी ट्रेसेबिलिटी और ये बहुत मुश्किल नहीं है अगर आप किसी भी सुपर स्टोर में जाएंगे तो इसके द्वारा वो लोग अभी मेंटेन करते हैं छोटी-छोटी दुकानें आजकल टैग लगा के बैठती हैं और ये टैग ₹3 में बनता है तो अगर टैग में लगा के एक सीट एंड बर्थ के ऊपर बता सकूं कि ये सीट एंड बर्थ यहां से ओरिजिनेट हुई थी और इस कोच में लगी थी अब इस कोच में चली गई है तो इट इज पॉसिबल टुडे टेक्नोलॉजी परमिट्स इट वेदर वी वांट टू डू इट इज और नॉट or this is the last slide, best inspection is no inspection, as I said. So, manager's dilemma is ki outturn versus quality. Whether I should get more outturn if I try to enforce the quality, I will have to suffer on the outturn. But the experience in auto industry and even in railways, in rides, in, I was also seen that better the quality, higher the outturn. I never used to get stuck up in RCF because of the big suppliers like uh, Northern say. Their material, who, which was quality material, was coming on time. But the small suppliers whose quality was biggest problem and headache always used to give me the headaches as far as the outturn is concerned. I was not able to turn out the coaches in time. Uh, team of CSID, customer, supplier, designer, and inspector, if they can team up, a very good scheme of things can come. Thank you. I'm sorry, uh, I ran through this. And uh, if there are any questions, I can quickly take and then we can uh, So, um, um, we are really running short of time. Yeah. I'll request uh, Vivek Kumar to, whose question was interrupted uh, and did not Sorry. take logical conclusion. So, Vivek Kumar, sir, can ask the question. I, I, I will ask. I think that there was, a, you showed one slide where you compared the gas concentrations of NCD and EN uh, test methods. So, uh, I'll show that. 14 gases, EN tests, uh, 8 gases, 6 gases, Rights has confirmed that they are not there. In every gas, the permitted concentration uh, in EN is uh, more stringent than um, NCD. Yes. And why yes. is it that whatever material uh, passes uh, in EN, it fails miserably in NCD? This, this, is slide, this is a slide you are referring to. Yes, yes. 
Now, here you will see that most of the like uh, carbon monoxide, NCD will say 4,000 uh, reference values. I agree with what, what you say. This is a fact. But what I'm, what the question that I'm asking is that uh, according to this, EN is a much tighter uh, test method. EN so, is more accurate. But in, in practice, why are they behaving uh, otherwise? Uh, well, the only reason is that all the tests, today I came to know that there was only out of three important tests, HRR, and this is for my request to all the PUs. To I'm only talking about toxicity. Well, why is it that... Uh, बहुत एक important point बोलने वाला हूँ जो भी PU वाले हैं वो ध्यान से सुने तीन test हमने specify किए थे LOI तो वैसे ही नहीं है EN में ठीक है toxicity था उसको type test बना दिया type test में भी साल में एक बार होगा उसके बाद HRR को type test बना दिया और तीसरा smoke detection को HRR type test बना दिया तो now nothing is left which rights can check now we are either we have so much faith on the I don't mind Suppliers can be very good in India. I do believe that suppliers are very good in India. But if we want to give to a new inspection region, then we should declare it as a policy. All these tests are type tests now. So nothing is being checked except for once in a year. Sandeep can correct me if I am wrong. HRR आप चेक कर रहे थे लेकिन शायद आज ही कोई मॉडिफिकेशन में देखा कि वो भी डिलीट हो गया। उसमें ये लिखा हुआ है कि जब तक इंडिया में फैसिलिटी डेवलप होती हैं लैब की, RCF ने जो द टाइप टेस्ट बनाया है उसके साथ ये लिख दिया है कि जब तक टेस्ट फैसिलिटीज डेवलप होती है तो ये शुरू की 500 सीट एंड बर्थ के लिए ये किया है तो वे आई वुड लाइक टू आई वुड लाइक टू करेक्ट इट हियर फॉर द एमसीएफ टेंडर्स वी आर इंक्लूडिंग ऑल द थ्री टेस्ट एक्सेप्टेंस टेस्ट नाउ थैंक यू Market limit for the type test, but we have reduced in as a special condition, reduce it to 100 core set for the city per lab. And all the three tests, including toxicity, is an acceptance test in all of our procurement at MCF. Thank you. You have taken the correct action. Nothing more to add. Yankik, my question is not answered. According to this table, EN is a more stringent test than NCD. Then why is it that whatever phase in NCD passes in EN? Should be the other way around. NCD का एक ही drawback है विवेक that it is highly subjective test. आप नहीं नहीं highly subjective तो दस बार करा लो आप अलग अलग labs में करा लो directionally it is not that subjective whatever fails continues to fail the value may be three sometime two point five other time four four in some other. Continue to fail. Correct मार. Correct मार जा जा विवेक. Sir, I would like to react to Shri Vivek Marji on that subject. Sir, you probably, you are referring to a particular case where the sample had failed in the NCD test. Probably the same sample if tested in the EM standard would also fail. So, same sample has not been tested in the EM standards. Then you get it tested. You should do a large amount of testing rather than the numbers and depending on the numbers, this issue is so serious that you should do a large amount of testing on the same sample. Because okay. that sample uh, so, was drawn from something that had uh, passed in uh, EN. Uh, 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 sir, I will only conclude by saying that right now, what we can do, since this is a specific case which we are not aware and we could not prepare for that, but I'll uh, if the question can be posted on the group, then if uh, this can be taken up uh, specifically by through the rights, because certainly as Nair, I have nothing to add. I have one, one question to uh, rights also. How has rights ensured that these six gases are not there? What tests have rights done? Sir, is ke liye, uh, I have taken out uh, around uh, 10 uh, uh, case inspection cases. And I have seen that mostly CO, CO2, uh, SO2 and NOx. These are the prime four gases which are available, uh, uh, which are found during this uh, toxicity test. So, testing by which method? Sir, sir, we are doing this request that a joint committee will analyze all these points. You have pointed out that NCD, like we take a sample, we test a firm of a NCD 1409 and EN 45545. So, if a joint committee will test these three things, then the practical aspect will come, sir. 
मतलब जो आप ये कह रहे हैं सर कि ये कौन सा केस है सर जिसमें ई एन में पास हो रहा है और एनसीडी में फोन फेल हो रहा है ये राइट्स की भी नॉलेज में नहीं है संदीप कहना है मेकर रिक्वेस्ट एंड संदीप एंड श्री विवेक दैट वी कैन लीव दिस पॉइंट फॉर आवर डिस्कशन इन ओपन हाउस इफ वी गेट टाइम लेट अस फिनिश द लास्ट प्रेजेंटेशन सो दिस इशू कैन बी डिस्कस वन टू वन आउटसाइड दिस सेशन तो सर ऑब्जर्वेशन I will interrupt and uh, uh, I, I will interrupt and make a uh, one point about this. That during the last meeting we had with everyone, meeting we had with everyone about tenders and uh, fire cases. We, we had specifically mentioned that we should avoid the tendency to tailor make specifications. We should adopt uh, specifications. so that the test methods the test equipment and the manufacturers infrastructure is all standard and aligned if we pick up one standard from one place another from another then we create a medley which will always remain tailor made and we'll have all these difficulties which are continuing so my suggestion is instead of entering into a uh, system of comparing various standards adopt one don't make match and mix that's all i can uh, leave as an advice uh sure sir uh, we will uh, try to follow that and uh, i would like to request the last speaker of the day mr shailesh uh, to start his so sir and try to keep it short and brief and try to finish it in 20 20 25 minutes i would like to have uh, one minute to say something yes sir isme uh, we have heard very good sessions and very good technical analysis also but what has to be done so i'll request uh, mr yagnik the brain behind today's seminar and all the other organizers that how do we take the discussion ahead because because obviously in these kind of issues the decision cannot be taken only sane voices as dg sir said that uh, it cannot be tailor made to a particular requirement and all that so all those things have to be discussed so what should be the platform to discuss this that also should be deliberated and uh, so it may not be possible to discuss that in today's vc yes, so i'll request mr yagnik and now ravi the director me to take it ahead yes, and uh, maybe create a small think tank maybe discuss some more because simple question that how many gases should be tested now one specification refuses to recognize the danger created by phosgene now phosgene is poison the first gene is poison now a standard which is a european standard refuses to recognize the dangerousness or whatever of first gene so what is the reason they also won't have ignored it without saying anything so what have they said unless we go through that we will not be able to take a call so this detailing all these discussions all this analysis requires a extended forum of today's vc so let us create that and from the board side we can say ki once a concerned party proposes this we will go ahead with creation of such a body so that these things can be taken to a logical conclusion board can order a creation of body of knowledge and uh, we can there after discuss the issues in this area so we can go with the presentation please if permitted yes sir yeah, so please. mr shailesh you can start uh, uh, good afternoon uh, gentlemen uh, senior officers of railways Uh, DG sir, uh, uh, it's a great opportunity for having given us the opportunity to present on uh, the basics of fire detection and suppression system. Uh, there's a lot of things I wanted to say about this presentation, but a uh, lot of it has been already covered by many officers. There are very fruitful and very pertinent discussion on the various aspects of fire and uh, fire, uh, you know, suppression systems and standards, uh, which also you know, kind of uh, is covered in the presentation I'll be just sharing. I'll just put up the slide now. and then uh, we can go through that
So the slide is coming up shortly. So uh, I have been given a subject of fire detection and suppression techniques in passenger coaches. This is pretty uh, wide subject, uh, quite diverse, and a lot of technologies available today. Uh, as we know, uh, sensing technology per se has evolved over many years in the last 40, 50 years with some of the latest technologies, you know, like semiconductors, IOTs and MEMS, etc. Uh, where the basic requirement is, you know, detection uh, uh, of the earliest possible time in the earliest possible time of a possible event of fire uh, through detection of uh, what we call as white smoke or early smoke. And therefore, uh, new technologies like uh, uh, what we call as early warning smoke detection systems, etc., with complex algorithms and complex software and with uh, uh, very sophisticated laser detection systems are available today in the market. I'll just go through, uh, I'll just would like to acknowledge to begin with, uh, uh, we would like to give credits and acknowledgement to some of the officers and organizations of railways who allowed us to, you know, uh, to do this presentation. Uh, one being, you know, uh, IRIME uh, for the opportunity to present this webinar. RDSO Lucknow, uh, I've been uh, associated with RDSO Lucknow for the last now eight, nine years. Uh, specifically on a particular subject, which is fire detection system in AC coaches. And uh, and I believe uh, as an engineer and as a designer all my life that RDSO have come uh, you know, forward and uh, have delivered a very decent and a very complete fire safety solution for AC coaches uh, on a standalone or a rec basis for Indian railways. Uh, there has been a lot of uh, modifications, amendments done over a period of time with discussions with stakeholders. But uh, as on today, as on 2019, the latest revision of the specific RDSO spec uh, encompasses most of the areas of monitoring, not only smoke, also, you know, uh, the various uh, health parameters and uh, uh, pollution parameters in an AC coach for the passenger safety. Uh, I'll go into why uh, it also covers apart from, uh, you know, smoke detection. It also covers other areas. I'll go into that in, in more detail later. I uh, would also like to, you know, uh, thank uh, officers of Integral Coach Factory Chennai, uh, who have designed and executing a wonderful engineering marvel of a product called Vande Bharat. The reason it is very close to my heart is that uh, a challenging uh, work was given to us to develop a, a fire safety or a smoke detection system for Vande Bharat project, and it's been very, uh, you know, satisfying to work at that level, high level of engineering, to put together a system. And then, of course, we would like to thank uh, our OEM Ochiki. Uh, we are uh, the system, the official and uh, uh, you know uh, system integrator for Hochiki uh, Europe in India. Now, Hochiki is a Japanese company. It's a very old, 130 year old company, well respected worldwide. They are in the business of smoke detection and fire detection for the last 130 years worldwide. And in the Indian operations, we take care of their entire business in the rolling stock. We are very pleased and proud to be associated with them because they have some of the best product, I believe, as an engineer in the world very compact, very lightweight, uh, consume less power, and, and also very sensitive and very robust. I have not come across, I'm not talking about BF of Hochiki because I belong to Hochiki. I'm, as an engineer, I'm speaking today. I have had to work with Hochiki for the last seven, eight years. I've never seen a failure of a Hochiki product till date. So that is the confidence level I have in, on the, on, in, in handling the product, and therefore we believe that we can do justice to our customer. Then of course, the whole concept of building a system and the fact that I just mentioned in point two that RDSO has put together a very good system, it comes into play more because at Modern Coach Factory uh, in the past, we worked with them for the health and safety of AC coaches through uh, what is a project called Smart Coach, wherein uh, the specification of Smart Coach covered not only smoke detection, but the entire health parameters of the entire AC coach. Uh, and we were uh, again, uh, very lucky to have associated with that project which kind of evolved into a system building, an architecture which was built where a system can be put in place for monitor monitoring the entire coach and having monitoring the entire coach health uh, for possible preventive action and also uh, transmit this data or available parameters to a remote area where we could eventually uh, take corrective action. And as Professor Agnik mentioned to me in the earlier discussion that we can use this database to do what we call as trending analysis, and regression analysis and take corrective action in possibly preventing any such events, either it be smoke 
it could be machine monitoring, it could be bearing monitoring, it could be condition monitoring, and there's so many other parameters, uh, you know, a coach could pay beyond, uh, you know, the realm of uh, just uh, fire uh, uh, by way of monitoring only the smoke. So I'll not touch that subject right now. What other benefits are there within the RDSO spec, which was has been formulated? We I'll just stick to uh, the subject matter, which is basically the smoke monitoring. The whole goal here is now for us to detect as early as possible and have sufficient amount of time uh, for a possible fire event. So there we take corrective action in terms of number one, warning the passengers and the coach attendant. Number two, to make sure the train is brought to a halt. Number three, to evacuating the passengers. And then finally, trying to suppress the fire in case if it goes out of hand. So that is the goal of uh, this uh, system here. Now, I will not touch into, you know, uh, this, uh, this subject has already been discussed by many, many fellow colleagues and officers here uh, who have touched in great length of possible, uh, uh, you know, risk areas in train engines and coaches. Uh, probably in most trains, subways, metro trains, diesel electric trains, uh, in AC coaches, uh, non AC coaches, uh, they are all subject to you know high risk of fire. Number one, because they're moving, uh, rolling stock, and two, uh, there are a lot of critical uh, electrical equipment which are there and may cause either due to human negligence or due to material failure a possible fire due to sparking or heating uh, events. Now, and of course, the possible causes are many uh, railways would have identified much more. They're more, uh, you know, uh, uh, authorized or more uh, you know, domain having more domain knowledge in this area. And uh, I've just touched that and the possible fire and a possible fire could be, you know, injure or kill passengers and damage costly equipment and can also toxicity can kill passengers and also cause an explosion. And we have got peculiar situation in India where some people smoke in toilets and then there are passengers who carry flammable material, unauthorized material. Would also be a potential danger, though that should not happen. But these are these are practical possibilities which do happen. Now, in fire detection, uh, the whole concept is about fire protection system. When we say fire protection system, you're looking at detection first. Uh, as we discussed now, that we need to detect as early as possible, and then having detected a possible event of a fire by early detection of smoke, then you look at a possible evacuation system. Because you try to take the passengers out to safety and then you kick in your fire fighting system to suppress the fire in case it goes beyond, you know, the okay, eventual combustion takes place. So this is how uh, the concept is allowed around fire detection. Now, fire detection systems are technically classified in various ways. Uh, what is available in the world today? The based on technology, the based on standards. Uh, there, there are many vari variations where you can classify uh, fire detection. So one of the technical classifications are what is called as wired fire detection systems and wireless fire, de fire de uh, detection systems. As the name says, wired, you get again in wired conventional systems and you get intelligent addressable. Now, conventional fire detection systems are ones which you are not able to address uh, where the specific fire took place, but then you cover in the whole area. An intelligent addressable fire detection system, you are able to address or locate the possible source of fire. So that is in case of fire. Similarly, it is mimicked in wireless transmitting data from individual sensors into a remote location, and therefore the need of wiring is eliminated. So that is the wireless fire detection system. And then you can classify further uh, on the basis of standards and related uh, approval bodies. So fire detection products could be based on geographical location you could have fire detection systems approved by by way of FM approved, which is in the US, or UL listed as well as again in the US, and then EN54 standard, which is basically uh, uh, around in Europe, most of it in UK and Europe. And they in turn, uh, the approving bodies are like FM is uh, the approval body in the US, UL is basically a private laboratory, but well uh, in the US, and they, they do their own testing uh, and then, of course, the EN, which we are dependent more is on the EN standard, uh, which is an European standard and uh, agencies like LPCB, VDS Germany, BAS UK, they do the approval of the various products. Now, here, I already the subject has been touched by many officers here, but I would like to reiterate that the test method universally, the law of physics is same. The test method uh, is same across standards, what is being followed irrespective of which country, which standard we follow. Most of the test methods for every product, which has to be certified that they do their job, what they are supposed to do, 
that is all the test method is same across standards barring a small variation uh, so this is a kind of a disclaimer i would like to put so therefore if some uh, company comes from europe or from india or from uh, you know or from europe uh, uh, or us and they bring different approvals uh, we need to understand that the approvals may, may be different in terms of the agency which has issued but then the test methods are same in most of tests as listed in the various test methods uh, to be carried out for qualifying the product so this is something uh, we need to keep in mind now also the classifications is also based because fire detection is uh, such an area where you need to detect in a very uh, you know difficult hazardous environment so you can also have specialized approvals uh, and fire detection products tailor made for those approvals in case of marine like you know ONG, oil and gas refineries ongc platforms you know uh, various highly explosive area methane and uh, uh, butane uh, uh, is a, is a is a potential risk of explosion so there are specific products tailor made to those applications then you have intrinsically safe products for underground mines where you know accumulation of gas in underground mines or mining areas which can cause explosions and then you also have sil2 approved products specifically nowadays a lot of uh, rolling stock uh, uh, applications require sil2 approvals where safety integrity levels are uh, at higher levels to ensure that redundancy is built into the system built into your product so that even if there's a primary failure a secondary uh, you know circuit kicks in and still continues to monitor the parameter which is supposed to be monitored so these are specialized approvals where classification can be done of products based on these kind of approvals as well going to the next slide uh, the installation standards uh, like in the uk and the us and india uh, uk of course is basically the en54 standard for all fire detection systems uh, all fire detections are classified under a standard called en54 uh, they run from en54 1 to almost to en54 37 and these are various standards for various equipment within the firefighting system and then uh, fire detection system sorry and then of course main approval bodies are bas and lpcb and the installation st standards the installation standards bs 5839 similarly us usa they preliminary follow ul and fm and their approval bodies are same the fl uh, you know um um and the inst installation standard is your uh, national fire uh, you know uh, 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 authority in the US, which is NFPA 72, they follow those standards for the installation of fire detection system. In India, uh, we don't have our own uh, uh, standard in terms for, uh, you know, especially for aspirating type, etc. So we are dependent on, uh, you know, the EN54 uh, or UL or FM standards uh, as the, you know, certificates on which we depend. So here, uh, as a vendor here now, and as a designer of a product, there's a limitations, you know, how much we can do in India, because we are dependent on the detectors to come from abroad, because these certificates are only issued in, in the UK or in the US or in Germany. And, and, and therefore, the standard demands these certificates. So therefore, there are limitations that can an Indian company design uh, their own core product and therefore build a system around that. So what is happening in India is like for vendors like us, that we are dependent on an EN54 certified product, let's say in our case, Kochiki, Japan, and then we build a system around that based on the requirement of Indian railways. Now, uh, I'll just pass through this slide, which is pretty difficult to see as well as a lot of matter is there. So this is a comparison chart we have made of listing out all the various standards and then, uh, and, and, and then comparing the test methods of each of the standards as listed in the test uh, standard. And we will find that all the standards or all the test methods are same across standards. May it be, you know, UL standard or an EN547 or an EN54 or a UL268 or an IEC60571 or any EN50155. So across standards, the test methods are same. Irrespective of, that means all the various physical parameters are being measured in the same method and in the, by using the same instrument and the same parameters across standards. Irrespective of which, which uh, uh, you know, certifying agency is issuing the certificate just go back to the next slide so now we go into the building blocks of uh, various uh, you know components of a smoke detection system the earliest smoke detectors which are very primitive was almost 60 years 70 years back so we had point detectors uh, conventional type we had beam detectors off late in the last 15, 20 years, we have what is called the aspiration type or the sampling smoke detectors. And then we also have the duct, pipe, duct point smoke detectors for the AC ducts, et cetera. Now, within that, there are many more classifications. I'll not go deep into it because it's a very vast subject. Um, 
now primarily smoke detectors, point detectors have limitations because uh, you fix on a fixed point and then only when the actual smoke particle raises from the ground or from the point of where the source is and actually physically it is the smoke detector is able to see the smoke, then only a detection can happen. Therefore, there are a lot of, uh, you know, uh, physical parameters involved here in terms of possible non-detection or erroneous detection because of airflow, uh, you know, dynamics, uh, etc., which may not allow the smoke which originated from a source to have reached the smoke detector per se. So, therefore, smoke, point smoke detectors have huge limitations uh, that uh, in an application where we want to detect, uh, you know, uh, smoke in critical areas like a passenger coach, for example. Uh, and uh, uh, we'll go into why, uh, you know, aspiration type is much better technology for an AC coach than point detectors or any other technology available right now. Now, I'll go to the next one is basically the heat detectors. So, it is not that, you know, when we want to detect uh, uh, smoke or possible fire situation, in any application, especially in uh, AC coach, that we need to only measure smoke. There is also, there are certain areas within the AC coach where you may not be able to measure uh, smoke, but you would uh, depend on heat or the rate of rise of heat uh, through heat detectors. So you have different types of heat detectors there in the market, uh, which are again, by the way, all the products here, which are being mentioned, either are EN certified or EN5, uh, you know, 4552, which is HL2, HL3, or maybe SIL2 certified. So most of the products are either SIL2 certified or HL certified or EN certified for railway application. So heat detectors are also similarly approved for these applications. And heat detectors, you have thermistor type, you got bimetallic types and linear type, that is LDH, which is the old technology. But they're also useful in certain areas like electrical cubicles or where you have don't have access and where there's a rate of rise of heat in electrical cubicles where you can you know, lay a linear heat detector. So these are, this is the heat detectors here. Then we go to what we call as the now off late in the last two years, three years, I mean, sorry, 50, eight to 10 years, multi-sensor classification has come where multi-sensor is a combination of, you know, smoke and heat sensor together in one unit, where it could be that you have set a threshold level for smoke sensor. And also you can have, you know, uh, the rate of rise of heat at an early stage could be a possible source of, uh, you know, smoke and therefore fire. You can have, or you can have both of them together working in one sensor. So these are new concepts which have just recently come in case of point detectors, what we call as multi-sensors. Then apart from that, we have, having detected a smoke, a possible event of fire, uh, we need to notify. So you have different types of certified uh, audible and visual alarms and not go deep into it, the very simple devices. Uh, they're wall sounders and ceiling sounders and uh, beacons, which are flashers, which indicate to an attendant or to passengers, there's a possible potential, uh, you know, uh, 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 an, a fire event or a smoke event which, uh, you know, a preventive action has to be taken. Now, beyond this, beyond smoke and heat, uh, as we discussed in electrical bus bar and electrical cabinets, there are a lot of bus bars which are there. Now, there are there is a possibility that mechanically they are not, uh, you know, uh, uh, harnessed properly, installed properly. They could cause, uh, you know, spark, and there could be sparking from elsewhere, from circuit breakers, etc. Now, here, a combination of flame detectors can be used and flame detectors could be of ultraviolet type or could be of UV or a combination type. Now, depending on IR and UV flame sensor, what, uh, you know, uh, uh, spectrum of spark we want to measure, how soon we want to measure, at what angle we want to measure. Now, based on that, we can make a choice and we can have a combination of this. Now, this is, this, this is basically to possibly measure, you know, sparks uh, in case of electrical switchgear equipment. Now, coming to... Uh, uh, the one which matters to us right now where uh, uh, Indian Railways have taken a decision, RDSO has made a detailed specification uh, on a smoke detection system and an early warning system, uh, which is what we call as aspirating smoke detection system. It's a very simple block diagram here. Try to illustrate it as simple as possible. There's a unit called, uh, uh, I'll just pull my cursor, cursor here. This unit is called an aspirating smoke detector unit. It has got a very high sensitive laser chamber here. And a lot of software algorithm is very intelligent software al algorithm is written into this here and an intelligent device. What it does it, it is able to detect very, very low levels of carbon particles which are suspended in the air. And these are actually sampled through these pipes which are mounted across the ceiling of the coach, hidden from the view of the passenger. And now in case of Vande Bharat, we've done a, a job where the, even the nozzle is visible, uh, is not visible uh, to the passenger area in such a way that aesthetically that your coach looks very nice and uh, 
there's no way anybody could tamper in future or in, in any possible event and plus you're also able to sample every corner of the coach of the possible air there and therefore a possible event uh, in case suppose in any corner of a passenger area if there was a smoke event so that can be quickly sampled and it will and there's a suction pan in this unit where i've just shown my cousin mark and there's a very powerful suction pan which is actually sampling air throughout the coach uh, and this uh, this sampled air is presented in the chamber here in the laser in the laser chamber here and here what happens is in the laser chamber there it works on a laser diode and emitter and a detector system and a, and a mirror so using the scattering principle uh, the carbon particles tend to scatter light the laser light so the more the carbon particle comes in the more the percentage obscuration of smoke particles in a given volume of air that's what is the smoke detector is trying to do here in air sampling so as and when we are sampling the air through the piping system and in case when the smoke actually is sampled through and then is presented in the sampling chamber what is happening here is the uh, smoke detector is the now actually sampling uh, the uh, carbon particle detecting it and then based on the threshold levels we have set rdso has set some three threshold levels which is called as uh, you know alert action and fire uh, alert means the attendant has to be alerted that an event may take place so that is at a low level of 0.3 obscuration per meter and subsequently uh, an uh, action is the accumulation of smoke is continuing that means the smoke is getting out of hand and therefore some action has to be taken so in action the hooter and you know the audible alarm goes off and the passengers are also alerted and as well as the crew coach attendant and the driver is alerted and then subsequently as the smoke is accumulating more and more and it has reached 1.6 obstruction meter then in that case what is happening is now the braking is applied the system will automatically apply the brake uh, irrespective of the driver's intervention and then the, the idea is to bring the train to a halt and then evacuate the passengers and then if there's a fire suppression system that should kick in place for which again the interface is available within this system uh, so this is what the in 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 in, in very simple term this is what the whole uh, system works like now a simple a nozzle there is a nozzle here in the roof now as i said earlier or in lhb and icf coach the typical installations have been that there has to be nozzle visible now because of aesthetics of the coach etc now we made a system wherein the nozzle is not visible to the co to the passenger area or to anybody but the sampling is happening but through the roof at specific points and then these sampled days are conveyed through fire retardant pipes they are en certified pipes uh, into the detector here and this detector in turn detects the possible event and then does its own logical function. There's a lot of electronics involved here to do various electronic functions. I'll go uh, as quickly as possible to the next slide. So this is a building block. Why I said RDSO has done a good job is, if you look at the building, this basically is the spec of the RDSO, literally speaking. Uh, as an electronics engineer, we have understood the specification and then built a system around it. Uh, which basically complies with most of the requirements of RDS or all of the requirements of RDS specification, which is CG04 revision 5. Now, unless we don't build the system around that spec, now there is no way we can deliver or comply to the railways the requirement. Now, what RDS has taught is not only build a smoke detection system, they also build the hardware in such a way that we can integrate the rest of the uh, monitoring system into the same system, uh, uh, parameters or other, into the same system and therefore convey to a remote area and do various other analysis as well, apart from smoke detection. So that way, this uh, this hardware is kind of uh, valuable to, uh, you know, railways. They can utilize, they can extract much more from this equipment from what is being really done now. And there's more data available for railways uh, on a coach level basis, which as uh, Professor Ednik said, as one of the things we should be doing, you can do the data analysis and come to a conclusion, what is the pattern of the various parameters being monitored in the coach all coming from the same hardware for the same cost without any additional investment by railways. So that facility is inbuilt into the system, which can be utilized, which are not being presently utilized. That is something we can think of it in the later because the building block is there to get in all the data inside, apart from just the smoke detection. So I'll go to the next slide, uh, which is what we have done for uh, the one day Bharat. Now here, not only uh, 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 you collect smoke data, you integrate your entire electricals into uh, the coach electrics and propulsion system. Then you also transfer all the data to the TCMS, train TCMS, where the driver is aware of all the parameters being monitored at coach level. The driver is able to talk to coach level. He is able to talk to every coach and then give commands and therefore extract information in a cyclic manner in every milliseconds, whatever has been specified in the standard. And therefore, you have full control over the health of the 
individual coach. Now, what we have done is we have gone forward apart from just detecting smoke. We are also uh, added value uh, in every coach in the specific project, which we are doing. We have added uh, uh, smoke detector specific uh, SIL2 certified smoke detectors in electrical panels, in pantry areas, in under undercarriage uh, electric electrics, so that more areas of the coach is covered for any possible event of fire. And the idea is to detect as early as possible the smoke, uh, smoke detection. So, as I said, there's a lot of value in this standard, which we need to understand as engineers, which can be, you know, capitalized by without having any additional. For example, when I say smart coach, when you go back to smart coach in MCF and uh, look at the architecture of that, and then uh, overlay that architecture over RDSO spec CG04, it's almost same. Except the fact that here we are only stressing on smoke detection. We can also monitor a lot of other health parameters of the coach as well from the same system without any additional cost to the railways. This I would like to emphasize because we wish as a vendor that our railways get better value for the money they're spending, uh, you know, for individual uh, coach. Uh, because this aspirating system is a costly piece of device. Uh, but why aspirating device now? Uh, I'll go to that slide now. Uh, why not to a simple point? Uh, this is the more, I'll not go into the wiring system, etc. because it's pretty complex here. Uh, this is not a forum. Uh, I'm sorry I put this slide here. Uh, this we can take it elsewhere, uh, maybe in some other discussion. So we'll, the benefits of why uh, aspirator, you know, is why can't we work on point detectors? Why can't we work on a combination of flame detectors and smoke detectors? Why can't we work on, uh, you know, uh, multi-sensors, etc.? As we discussed, the whole idea is what is called a true measurement. As, as engineers, as measurement engineers, what is that we want to measure? We want to measure true or at, at least 80, 90 probability in a given volume of air, the ability for the system to detect a smoke particle in a true sense and as early as possible, so that one, we are actually measuring a possible smoke particle in any corner of a coach or in any area. And two, we are able to transmit that information and take corrective action at the earliest possible time. The only technology which will allow this to happen is aspirating smoke detection system, simply because this level of sophistication of able to discriminate between dust particles and smoke particles against smoke particles, what we call as white smoke and gray smoke. So white smoke, which is not visible to the naked eye. This is what our system is trying to detect. Now, these white smoke have such minute levels of carbon particles suspended in the air, and only this detector can uh, you know, detect and measure and give an output. And that's the reason why uh, uh, aspirating device is possibly the best possible. And again, uh, you know, without trying to be patronizing, uh, you know, hats off to RDS so that they thought of this about six, seven, or eight years back of this technology that this should be the right one. But as an engineer, I criticized this system when I started thinking there are much more cheaper solutions, etc. But over a period of time, I realized that the only way you can have a robust system and a system which actually does true measurement and also uh, adds value in terms of you know logical function, what RDSO is driving at. Now that is only possible through a system-driven uh, uh, you know specification rather than a uh, equipment driven or a product driven specification so in that uh, in that sense uh, aspirating smoke detection system looks like is a very good solution in the given circumstances a given application now uh, uh, two as i said uh, uh, it has got a sensing chamber which can differentiate between you know i have highlighted in red here uh, in the smoke particles and dust particles and therefore it can differentiate between the two and there's a filtering mechanism and there's a flow rate mechanism where we are actually measuring the continuous flow of the given volume of air in the coach, so we are able to eliminate any nuisance alarm or unwanted alarms as well as, which is a peculiar problem for a train, you know, uh, as well, or rather a, a irritated uh, problem to a train driver when he tries to get, to, you know, or when he gets, uh, you know, false alarms uh, due to false detection or, uh, you know. Uh, uh, Shall I interrupt? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I request you to just uh, complete the session a little well, faster. Yeah, Thank I do that, sir. Yeah. So, and then we go to unaffected airflow, as I said, because airflow uh, takes the smoke particles away and therefore uh, aspirating is much uh, better because you are actually sampling the whole coach. And then uh, uh, degradation of aesthetics is not there, as I said earlier, because we are concealing the full pipe, we are concealing the sampling nozzle. Therefore, uh, the passenger or the coach, the passenger is not able to see the nozzles or where the sampling is done. And, and and therefore the coach is much more ethically looking. And then of course it works in very harsh environment simply because the detector is detect, is mounted or installed outside of the detection area. Only the uh, fire and sampling pipes are there. Therefore your detection system is actually well protected and it is safe and still uh, uh, you know recording events as a black box of the events taking place in the passenger area. 
and then very easy to maintain believe it or not we uh, replace filters once in three years uh, which the detector has got apart from there is no maintenance whatsoever and the system is a uh, uh, very smart it will tell when there is a blockage or when there is a rupture or there's a pipe breakage or there's an intentional blockage of any of the nozzles and now that we have made it concealed so the probability of blocking the nozzle uh, by any uh, unauthorized person uh, which is eliminated and in case at all, if there is a blockage, it would be over a period of two to three years because of accumulation of dust, which can again be, be very easily cleaned during normal POH and Medolin maintenance. And then uh, uh, what the basic compliance requires, I've listed in this uh, uh, slide here uh, to meet the requirements. What are the basic compliance anybody has to fulfill? And this can be seen later in uh, greater length. I'll be sharing this uh, slide, uh, you know, this presentation uh, to all the officers. And then, of course, uh, we were talking about suppression system as many um, we have discussed so much uh, by, by many officers so far. Now, suppression system, there are so many of them and uh, 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 the, the main uh, present suppression systems being clean chemical agents, inert gases, the traditional CO systems and, of course, the water mix systems. Uh, I'll not go very deep into it because many of the officers may be already knowing a lot about these uh, uh, processes which are used for fire suppression system. And uh, the, the benefits of so sorry, so you go over there. So the benefits of the various systems of fire suppression are you know based on cost effectiveness environmental friendliness, design flexibility, downtime cleanup, or they are widely accepted. So these are like some of the recommendations. These are through research papers uh, conducted by various uh, fire suppression companies and collated here as one final uh, uh, analysis. So depending on what we're looking at, we're looking at cost analysis, cost effectiveness or environmental friendliness, friendliness because we don't want uh, passengers to suffer. In our AC coach area, what would be uh, uh, good as per the recommendation would be, you know, inert gases or water mist, uh, and then widely accepted as on today is basically clean chemical agents and inert gases as suppression agents through pressurized uh, piping system. So in, in, in brief, uh, this is my presentation. Uh, I've tried as quickly as possible to rush through this one. Uh, pardon if I've kind of missed out many of the issues and I'm open for any questions or specific queries. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, DG sir. Thank you all the officers for giving this opportunity. For doing this presentation quickly. Thank you, Sailish. It's yes. been a wonderful presentation. Yes, sir. In Thank fact, you. Uh, you are one of the few uh, external presenters to the relay system and not talked anything about a company, but only talked about the subject and try to throw light on to various aspects of suppression and detection systems. Sir. As you said, aspiration is most important. And uh, we will uh, now uh, uh, request for one or two questions maximum, and I will exceed the time limit by 10 minutes to finally wrap up. Uh, so uh, request for one or two questions. Any questions? Sarbet Mathur, CMA, PCMA West End. I, yes. I don't have questions, and I, 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 it's not related to this particular uh, fire detection and suppression presentation about the whole day. So I have some observations. I'll start with just two minutes. I'll start with an analogy in the automobile section. Now, everybody knows automobiles, the concept of active safety and passive safety is extremely upfront in automobiles, right? And as in the last few decades, we have seen that active safety features like uh, uh, anti-lock brake system or lane change detection or uh, 360 cameras or electronic stability have taken precedence over passive systems. There are passive systems which are important like uh, crumple zones and maybe airbags, but there are other passive systems like making the whole structure very robust and things which have taken a back because there are balances, cost balances and you, you see, it, it's been found that active systems are much better, which prevent accidents rather than passive systems. In case of fire also, 
we pay less attention to active systems and we pay a lot of attention to passive systems like the fire retardant quality of material. So anytime a fire happens, everybody goes on uh, overdrive and it starts examining the specifications and the testing procedures. For the last more than 15 years, I do not recollect any fire incident in a railway which has led to loss of life. The last major such accident was in uh, Frontier Mill, was it Frontier Mill or Selda, whatever, in which, uh, which happened near Ludhiana, in which a lot of people uh, charred to death because the fire happened in the middle of night. Right? But there are regular small features which are active, which are active safety features, which are much, much, much more important. For example, just because we have a law which prohibits uh, smoking in public places, we do not have an ashtray in the toilets. Now, this is an absolutely ostrich and sand syndrome. A person who likes to smoke needs to smoke in a 12 hour or a 20 hour journey. He will smoke. So either he goes to the, uh, the, the doorway and smokes, but now we have doors which are shutting automatically. So what is the best place? He is idle while he while he's shitting. So he sits on the shit pot and smokes. What is the problem in providing us an ashtray near the shit pot? That has to be provided. So we don't provide an ashtray, but we try to do everything else. So remove FRP, dustbins, provide the stainless steel dustbins and things. They are important. I understand they are important. But the thing is that we have to cater to the human requirement. So we must provide ashtrays near the shit pots. The second thing, in electrical portion, I'll take only two examples. There will be hundreds more. I'll take yeah, two examples. In, elect in electrical area, what uh, Yagnik sir said was very relevant. There are certain parameters in which the MCB has to trip for 15 milliseconds or whatever. It's not checked. So we need to relook into the schedules. And at least some time, I, we have to start measuring. So we have to specify when to revisit these schedules. At maybe 9 years, 12 years, whatever. But we have to do it. This second portion, we never simulate the actual problem. For example, the commonest problem which we we have been encountering for the last say 20 years or whatever is that people use a small immersion heaters to heat uh, water or milk for the children, for infants. And they do it by plugging them into the laptop and uh, mobile charging sockets. You know, they are not designed to take that much of load, so they burn. Now, this can cause uh, fire also, but never in POH do we actually simulate it. We, next, we do not use this thing, so we have to actually simulate the thing. We have to, we have to actually should plug in the uh, immersion heater and see whether the uh, safety systems are working or not. So. What I'm trying to say is that we have to concentrate more on active things. So thermal scarings and things, neater layout of cables, design features, neater layout of cables. We have introduced Harting and uh, Vego connectors with LHB, which is again important. So those things are more important compared to the fire retardant properties of material. While they are important, they are less important. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Subhad. Uh, any other? Uh, this will be the last question we can take. Yes, yes. Uh, questions for the uh, You mentioned about the uh, the ASC sensor, yeah. and uh, since we try to run over the problem, what is the difference between a uh, uh, sensor which is set up for a compartmentalized space versus a sensor uh, set up for a an uh, open space because this is an issue of uh, contention with OTP, uh, the document that you submit to us. And uh, your uh, principle doesn't say that uh, 
a particular sensor is suitable for a compartmentalized space. So, what is the difference between a sensor suitable for a space which is compartmentalized versus a sensor which is suitable for an open space? Uh, sir, so basically, uh, uh, can I can I answer, sir? Uh, basically, uh, uh, all aspirators, sir, either it is Hochiki or any make, any XYZ make, most of them they just simply work on uh, you know sampling method, and the sampling method is uh, the amount of sampling air or the volume of air we can uh, measure or monitor is dependent on the sampling uh, uh, what do you call suction fan which is available in the aspirator. Because the detector per se is uh, uh, calibrated or uh, designed to read anything between as per LPCP certificate or VDS or UL. They are all uh, most of the detectors, early warning detectors. When somebody claims that their detector is early warning smoke detection system, and if a lab has given a certificate like LPCB or VDS or UL, if any such lab has given a certificate to that effect to that particular specific model or company, it amounts to say that the least count or the least measurement this detector can measure is from 0 0.003 or 0 0.00, 00 of that is 0 0.003 percent <laughs> of discussion per meter all the way up to four or five obscussion that is a full scale reading of the detector amounting to say the least count has been certified by the lab then only they can certify that the product is early warning number one now one of the limitations on the different models of uh, different companies make different models based on the economics of it of selling the product so now suppose somebody says i need a, a area of let's say 100 square meters to be measured obviously firelink 25 or the hochiki product what we are suggesting to coaches may not work because the capacity of the sampling uh, uh, suction fan within the detector is that much less for it to sample that much volume of air this is the only limitations now as per uh, our uh, experience of having installed in Northern Railway and in Smart Coach and also done uh, simulations elsewhere in other uh, in Taiwan Railways uh, in many other applications that any any coach which is have a length of about 20 25 meters to a width of about three three and a half yes, sir, meters. Okay. yeah and 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 based on the sorry sir oh, sorry 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 yeah the volume of air being monitored is sufficient for an filing 25 or whatever product we are suggesting what they are trying to say in terms of compartmentalization they are saying is in case uh, when you look at our uh, ac in our lhb and icf coach when we look at our compartments like if you look at our air uh, chair car now chair car is as if it's like an open air uh, because at low level all the chairs are there they're all spread out throughout the coach and there's no obstruction there so therefore the flow rate of of the air there is much faster and the response time is much faster there as compared to the same detector mounted in let's say two tire ac or a three tire ac where there is compartmentalization to a certain extent and 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 therefore uh, the flow rate will be dependent if i put a detect if i put a sampling nozzle and, and in, in an area or in the walkway and and uh, if there's a event of a smoke in one of the compartments in let's say two tire or a three tire ac the possibility of that air being sampled becomes difficult so therefore what what uh, ochiki says is in this kind of compartmentalization you it is better that you put nozzles or sampling nozzles in all the compartments which is what we have done so basically what we are trying to do is we are we are having a zigzag arrangement of installation of the sampling nozzle looking at each uh, you know uh, uh, birth area uh, as different compartments but measuring to the same sampling pipe to the same detector therefore eliminating that problem that's all they're manually saying, sir. That's it. There's nothing else. So uh, that's right, uh, Shailesh. Uh, so now we are coming to the end of the session. Sir. Unfortunately, we are uh, having shortage of time. Sir. And we are exceeding by 10 minutes. Another 10 minutes I'll take to wrap it up and quickly. Uh, I will uh, go back uh, to the address of CRB who has been very critical and stated that there should be no fire whatsoever on coaches and uh, our maintenance system should be very tight there should be no bypass of any fire safety systems and uh, the guidelines given by DG safety have been very important in the entire uh, deliberations I think uh, I personally feel that more such deliberations are required and this has been the first of its kind and uh, maybe um, 
रवि मैं ही बोल रहा हूँ कि सी एज बी डिस्कस ड्यूरिंग दिस सेशन की देर आर मेनी मेनी आस्पेक्ट एंड ऑफ दिस इशू बेसिकली तो आज हम लोगों ने थोड़ा बात किया मतलब बाई वे ऑफ डिलीवरी फ्रॉम सी टी आई डिलीवरी और बेसिकली एक तो ये इंस्पेक्शन की बात हुई बल्क इंस्पेक्शन रूटीन इंस्पेक्शन और देन वी टॉक्ट अबाउट दैक पार्ट स्पेक कवर किया अच्छा कवर किया रियाग्नि साहब ने एंड देन जो फायर डिटेक्शन सिस्टम जो आरडीएसओ के से से मिलके जो बनाया जा रहा है उसकी बात हुई तो अब क्या है कि प्लस जैसे सीआरबी साहब ने आई रियली अप्रिशिएट बिकॉज ये सब चीज़ें तो ठीक है अपनी जगह है लेकिन जो ऑलरेडी सिस्टम ने जो फंक्शनैलिटीज दी हैं जो प्रोटेक्शन दिए हैं और जो भी प्रिकॉशंस हैं इफ दे आर नॉट टेकन then obviously then the uh, problem का scope endless है तो जो सी आर बी साहब ने बोला कि जो चीज़ें प्रोटेक्टिव सिस्टम्स को बाईपास किया गया इस तरह की जो भी चीज़ें हैं वो इंपॉर्टेंट चीज़ें चूँकि हमारे सारे रेलवे के कुलीग हैं तो इस पर अ वेरी कंसर्टेड एफर्ट इज रिक्वायर्ड और ये और रवि सी टी आई की तरफ से मैं ये बोलना चाह रहा हूँ कि आने वाले जो हमारे सेशन्स होंगे तुम उसका कन्वीनियंट टाइमिंग अरेंज कर लो कि किस 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 फ्रीक्वेंसी पे करोगे और उसको कीप कवरिंग वेरियस फैसेट्स ऑफ दिस इशू आई मीन दिस टाइम वी फोकस ऑन टू इशू दिस टाइम इट कैन बी ऑन टू अदर इशूज तो लाइक दैट यू विल ओवर अ पीरियड ऑफ टाइम कवर द ब्रेथ ऑफ दिस इशू एंड ऑल दी फैसेट्स जो इसमें इंपॉर्टेंट है दैट इज ऑल दैट आई वॉन्ट टू डिस Yes, sir. So, and one more thing, sir. Apart from what uh, Dijinair has uh, very correctly ex- uh, put up, uh, we need there are a lot of facets, and we need to cover each facets in different different uh, such webinars. Nevertheless, uh, we will also need the help of RDSO and PUs to actively participate in such deliberations and also give certain uh, time and prepare certain. Lectures on various fronts. Or RDSO, um, RDSO. I have been an RDSO officer. I have been an RDSO officer. And I will only say this: RDSO yes, should not, RDSO should not feel shy in any situation because right. yes, we have. We are all working towards a target, and they are important partners. And uh, nobody is perfect. So right. We should work in that spirit. Or unke bina to hamari koi baat puri hogi nahi. PU yes. or uh, RCF, ICF, or ye. ये क्या कहते हैं आरडीसो बिना नो सच डिस्कशन विल बी कंप्लीट बिकॉज़ वी सेट आउट ऑन वेरियस थिंग्स दैट दे आर डूइंग है इनके दिमाग में है दे मे बी अदर सम थिंग्स व्हिच वी आर नॉट डूइंग वी मींस कि रेलवे से नहीं कर रहे हैं वो चीज तो वो उसके बिना बात हमेशा अधूरी रहेगी सो एंड एज डीजी सर इज राइटली डीजी सेफ्टी हैज राइटली पुट अप दैट वी शुड नॉट मेक टेलर मेड स्पेसिफिकेशंस एंड वी शुड मेक श्योर दैट we find parameters for critical evaluation of the specifications in the in a purchase situation and the cost of breach of contracts are also very very important and we need to build a lot of uh, we need to work a lot and uh, as i see the way forward put in by amme mpu and shri agnik sir uh, we need to follow up on a lot of issues and uh, we will uh, close this session uh now and uh, i think we'll meet again after some time and uh, that's the key and uh, i think we can make small smaller groups uh, discussion groups separately to discuss on this and uh, this has been an excellent forum for let us make it an excellent forum for exchange of ideas uh, brainstorming on solutions and uh, various other issues and uh, thank you one and all for being here and i must first of all uh, uh, thank shri yagnik sir for having been the brain behind it and spearheading this seminar and he has also come forward to take up a very important topic on the specifications which uh, most of us lack the information and he has done a wonderful study into the various uh, nuances of the specification where we are lacking forward and where we need to move forward and uh, mr shailesh has also given a wonderful insight into the various aspects of suppression 
technologies and detection systems and not uh, uh, withstanding uh, um, the various issues uh, rights rights have also given a very good insight and uh, i will the last say that we should not uh, as dg nayar sir said, said it, we should not shy away from speaking on this subject because this is a subject which troubled all of us till now and coach safety is prime importance for Indian Railways. We should not undermine, notwithstanding the fact that we have not had many casualties, but it could have left, led to some casualties. It's only incidental that we had a case in the middle of the night and most of the other cases in the day part of the night, or some of our staff have been vigilant enough to detect fire and stop it in time. So, but then nevertheless, uh, this exercise will go on and on. And uh, I, as uh, director in me, will take it forward and uh, take it further. And uh, with this, uh, I would like to wrap up the session. Thank you. Thank you, one and all. It's time for lunch. I think we already exceeded uh, 16 minutes. So I don't want to hold you on to you all still further. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you.